all. Your court vision is the stuff of legend. Just like the eyes in the back of your head. We know everything. Y'all know everything, huh? Mm-hmm. Ooh! Missed us. Can't hide from MIB. Mm-mm. We'll be watching you. And I'll be watching you right back. We'll be watching you watch us right back, won't we? We'll do this all day. Yeah, good. Let's do it. Still watching. They're watching. I'm leaving. Hmm? Yeah, I can see you, pal. I'm not gonna stop seeing you. My eyes don't get tight. I haven't even blinked yet. UC Irvine aiming to keep its postseason hopes alive. A confident UC Davis squad relishing the role of spoiler this weekend at Anteater Ballpark. It's Big West Baseball next on ESPN. We welcome you to Anteater Ballpark on the campus of UC Irvine. The opener of a Big West Conference three-game series. UCI looking to return to the regionals for the first time since 2014. UC Davis looking toward the future and gunning for the upset tonight. Let's take a look at the Big West standings. UCSB hoping to pull away from Cal Poly this weekend. UCI aiming for a second place finish. UC Davis still with hopes of finishing 500 or better in the Big West. And welcome everyone, Tim Beckward joined alongside by 14-year MLB veteran and former CSUN Matador, All-American Adam Kennedy. And Adam, lots still on the line for the Anteaters this weekend. And for Davis, they would like nothing more than to damage the Anteaters' postseason hopes. Yeah, they would. And for Irvine, as great as they've been all year long, these two weekends coming up here, huge. Let's take a look at tonight's keys. For UC Davis, keep playing great against good teams. They've played their best against some of the top Big West teams, continue to do that. And Tanner Murray is shortstop. He's been great all year long. I'm, I'm excited to watch him play. For Irvine, Andre Pallante on the mound, going for win number nine. He's been great all year, continue that. And then every great team has a great shortstop. Christian Koss kind of taking off for Irvine here. We'll see what he can do tonight. As you see Irvine trying to snap a two-game losing skid, you see Davis trying to make it three wins in a row okay. here at Anteater Ballpark this evening on a beautiful sun-drenched late afternoon, early evening here in South Orange County on the campus of UC Irvine as these two teams do battle for the first time here in 2019. These two programs at one time were Division II powers that made the leap into Division I and both have flourished in that time coming to the Division I level. Let's take a look at tonight's starter for UC Irvine and that is Andre Pallante, the All-American from a season ago as he went 10-1 and last year. This year, another terrific season. And added when you look at Andre Pallante, lots of velocity with that fastball, but an improved, effective four-pitch mix. Yeah, and he has he has good command of every pitch. He knows what he's doing. He's a seasoned vet up there. He's played USA Baseball, some top summer programs, so he, he has a good idea on the mound of how to get these hitters out. He's fun to watch. So Pallante will look to get the Anteaters back into the win column as UC Irvine trailing Cal Poly by one game for second place. The Anteaters know they've got to leap into that second spot for postseason consideration. Let's look at the UC Davis lineup and the man who gets them going is Tanner Murray, second in the conference in batting. In the middle, Gedstad and Lara providing some good punch and then down to the order, Kelly and Denholm providing the power. Yeah, Coach, Coach Vaughn talked a lot about Caleb Van Blake at third base. The numbers aren't quite there. But he's just said all year long, run into some bad luck. So UC Davis comes in as a team hitting 277 collectively on the year, and that is third best in the Big West Conference. So Andre Pallante will have a lot on his shoulders tonight. And every one of these conference games so critical for the Anteaters as they look to return to the postseason and the NCAA Regionals for the first time in five seasons under first-year head coach Ben Orlov. So Pallante getting the nod tonight. They will have Trenton Denholm headed to the mound tomorrow, who comes off Big West Pitcher of the Week honors and is amongst the national leaders in a number of categories. But Pallante really the one who anchors this staff and provides the veteran leadership on the mound for UC Irvine. Yeah, every, every great team, you know, we talk about the shortstop. Well, everybody has a great Friday night starter, and Pallante's that for Irvine. 
And a big matchup here just to start the game as Tanner Murray stands in. So Tanner Murray, who is one of the top hitters on the West Coast in all of college baseball, number two in the conference, as we told you, in batting. But he comes off of a season a year ago where he was the Big West freshman field player of the year when he hit 333. Yeah, he's a good-sized kid. Uh, with a good summer, he's going to the Cape Cod. Uh, we're talking about a, a top draft pick possibly next year. He's got some great numbers. Um, he seems to handle himself well in the field. We'll talk a little bit about him and, and what kind of joy he brings to uh, Coach Vaughn and his staff. So a breaking pitch that Murray was out in front of and nicely done by Andre Pallante to induce the ground ball. Let's take a look at the Anteaters defensively. And this is a defense that ranks number two in the Big West Conference in fielding percentage. And really up the middle so solid. Mazur has come along defensively. Ireland and Koss very good up the middle. And Mikey Folia out in center field covers a lot of ground, but a terrific arm as well. Yeah, they're, they are very strong up the middle. Cost just really kind of starting to take off this year. It's been a little bit of an up and down year for him. Maybe the pressure of the draft getting to him a little bit, Tim, but but he's been great as of late, and we expect to continue that to happen tonight and, and the rest of the year. Lewis is great at third, too. You know, he, his bat speaks highly for himself, but but the games I've watched, he's been really good at third. Yeah, he's he's been a surprise for a lot of people there at the hot corner. As Cooper Morrison standing in, working against Palante for the first time. To Morrison, who has pretty much been the everyday left fielder for Davis. And it's been a good one-two punch at the top of the lineup for Matt Vaughn with Murray and Morrison. Well, the Anteaters in that outfield. As you look out there tonight, and Jake Palmer is back there. For the first time in a while for UC Irvine, but a bunch of track stars out there, Palmer, Falia, and Peabody. And this one a hard hit, but well played by Ireland, the freshman. Yeah, you can kind of tell, you know, Peabody and Wright, tremendous speed, great outfielder, Flea in center. And then you can kind of tell with uh, Palmer not being quite 100% health-wise, Flea is really kind of giving him a little help and shading towards that left center field gap. you got got to help your buddies out there. Yeah. And it's Caleb Van Blake for UC Davis. And Van Blake, one of the real veterans on this squad for Matt Vaughn, the senior. Yeah, Coach Vaughn talked about, about Caleb and, and just his unfortunate luck this year at the plate. He, he, he said he's really had great bats, obviously, you know, keeping him in the three hole. Uh, sometimes you, you run into some bad luck as a hitter, and he seems to be doing that quite a bit this year. But the confidence keep him there and understanding what, what uh, guy in the three-hole kind of his at-bats bring to the team kind of set the tone. Yeah, the, yeah, like you said, Adam, the numbers just don't show how well he has hit the baseball this year and squared up the baseball. So Palante with the 0-2 count trying to get the Anteaters out of this inning. One, two, three. So Andre came to this program highly touted out of San Clemente High School, south of this UC Irvine campus by about 25 minutes. And with high expectations, was thrown into a big role as a freshman. As the one, two fouled away. But that freshman season was up and down and up and down. Real learning experience for Andre. And command was something that he struggled with. Everybody knew he had the velocity to really thrive, but it was just a match, you know, a matchmaking process for him and UC Irvine and getting in a rhythm and also developing that four pitch mix that has been so successful for him last year and this year. Yeah, I mean, no different than a hitter, you know, coming into college. You, you want to you try so hard to, to fit in and, and to, to prove that you belong here. And sometimes that, with that extra effort comes a little bit of, of lack of command and on the mound and offensively some harder swings than you, than you probably need. So 
all these kids eventually, their talents will, will let them settle in, and, and Palante has been great, and now he's one of the best pitchers in the country. So Palante got ahead 0-2, trying to get Van Blake to chase, now evened up in the count. Just missed off the corner there, and we have run full. So tough pitch for Van Blake to lay off of. Showing good discipline there. And you see Davis hoping for a two-out base runner here in the first inning. And this one playable. Long run for Palmer. In foul ground makes the catch. And Davis done in the first. Pilate does his job. Anteaters coming to the plate when we return. Aggies scoreless at the top of the first inning. UC Irvine will get its first cracks at Brett Irwin of UC Davis here in the home half on just a gorgeous evening for baseball here on the campus of UC Irvine. And there is Brett Irwin, the sophomore out of Fairfield, California. And he's been an anchor for Matt Vaughn on the mound this year. Not going to impress you with his velocity, but throws a lot of strikes and is consistently around the zone. Yeah, he's going to be about 84 to 86 with a little slider and a great changeup. He just pound, pounds the zone, lets his defense work. You tell his, his strikeout numbers aren't very high at all, 29 strikeouts in, in 65 innings. So that's not his game. He'll, he'll pound the zone, let his defense work behind him, see how the night goes. And let's take a look at the UC Davis defense behind Brett Irwin. And UC Davis obviously has struggled a little bit defensively, but offensively, UC Irvine, you look at their numbers, and they have not been overly impressive so far with the average, but the power numbers are there. And Jake Palmer, Christian Koss, very good table setters at the top. Brandon Lewis has been really the key for them in the heart of that lineup. Yeah, Brandon Lewis in the middle is great. For me, Jake Palmer is the key. He kind of settles in the rest of the lineup. Without him, you know, he's been injured a little bit. Uh, it's kind of taken a toll on his numbers, but they, they know how valuable he is at the top of the lineup. He watches a bat, takes a lot of pitches, makes pitcher work, and he, for me, just kind of lets the rest of the guys kind of settle in their natural positions throughout the lineup. So Palmer has missed recent games with an injury, but he's back in there. And the Ad Eaters really welcoming him back with open arms because of the fact that Jake can do so many things offensively. He's a great table setter, great speed at the top of that lineup. Yes, you know, this is a time of year where, where for Coach Orloff, just Jake getting healthy, Christian Costa short kind of really starting to take off himself. Uh, things are happening at the right time for them if they can just kind of make this little push and into the regional. I think they'll have some uh, success wherever they end up. Yeah, Palmer last year developed an injury in May. Had to play with a bad shoulder for almost a month. And it gutted it out, played out in the outfield. And the Anders last year, at one point in time with Palmer out there in the outfield, they had to run their center fielder, Falia, over to the outfield to make relay throws for Jake Palmer last year dealing with that shoulder injury. And this year, much healthier Jake Palmer, and that is out number one. And now we look at the personnel. We talked about the numbers behind the UC Davis defense. Let's look at the personnel for the Aggies. And again, like UC Irvine, strong up the middle, anchored by Logan Denholm, whose brother Trenton Denholm will make the start tomorrow. And then. Tanner Murray and Jalen Smith on the infield, and Garrett Kelly playing very well in center field. Yeah, went down to watch a little BP today, and I was 
enjoy watching how, how everybody kind of goes about the business. Logan Denholm, uh, I'm, during BP, he's, he's out. I'm wondering who the second baseman is. Well, it's him, and he's, he's taking ground balls in between his legs, having a little fun, flipping the ball to himself. Um, remind, reminds me of a catcher I played with, Yachty Molina. He would go take ground balls with us you know, before the game and just kind of shows their love for the game and, and how good of athletes they are behind the plate. Well, here's a protege of yours from JW North High School in Riverside, AK, and Christian Koss at the plate. And Christian, preseason-wise, a lot of talk about him with the upcoming draft that will be taking place coming up next week. Yeah, I, I'm, there's a lot of pressure for these kids, you know, more so than ever with social media and just, you know, the money that's being thrown to these kids in the draft. So more so than ever, they, they feel it. And, you know, he probably put a little pressure on him throughout the year, but, but who really cares about that now? He, he's really taken off, moved up in the tool hole tonight. He's probably feeling good about himself, and hopefully the scouts are taking notice. And it works, a one-out walk, so the first base runner of the evening. Yeah, Palmer kind of, you know, Palmer didn't get a hit there, but he sees seven pitches, six or seven pitches from from. Um, Irwin here and then you know Koss gets up there has another good at bat so like I said you know Palmer kind of setting the tone just lets everybody kind of fall into place. Now for Irwin there a rare walk he came into the ball game just 18 walks and 65 and a third innings pitched so his command has been there and again that's what Matt Vaughn has stressed about him he's always around the zone but he walks Koss there for the big bat of Lewis. Yeah, Lewis's power numbers, they, they've kind of been down a little bit the second half here, but his, his average has been great. His, his approach has still been great. He's an important cog in this lineup, and love to see him guy, with guys on base. Big West leader and runs batted in. Third in home runs, and this one given chase is Briggs down that right field side. So Irwin with that three-pitch mix. And Brett making his 12th start of the year. He's really hung in there in league play. And Matt Vaughn has all the confidence in the world in this young man. Good breaking ball there. Yeah, this is where Irwin kind of really is at his best, you know. Even though this guy on first base, he, he's huge with the ground ball. So regardless of how much trouble he may see him in, he's always one pitch away from a double play. He's got to be wary of Koss, who has eight stolen bases over there at first base. And time call by home plate umpire Sean Rakos. Yeah, we talk a lot about Irvine and Orloff and how he's kind of changed the, the, the way the offense runs. You know, in the past with, with Gillespie and kind of UC Irvine's, uh, the way they play the game, you know, big big spot for a hit and run or, or maybe even a bunt still with an out. But nowadays he just kind of has so much confidence in these kids really being aggressive with the bat and, and playing for those big innings. The kids love it. Kids love playing for him. Yeah, the Anteaters with a, a big change at the head coaching position. Uh, Mike Gillespie, a legend of the game of college baseball and so many years with USC and, and with UC Irvine. But then you make a change to a much, much younger head coach. And the players sure miss Skip, no doubt about it, but they love the excitement that Orloff brings to the table as well as Lewis getting one right there in the left center gap and now both runners into scoring position so Lewis does his job legs out a double here and the Anteaters have something going against Irwin here at the bottom of the first inning yeah great batting right there he's fooled a little bit but because he's such a good hitter he keeps his hands back he's able to still put the barrel as he's fooled on, on the slider here and, and because we got a sinker ball pitcher Tanner Murray's in the hole a little bit, sneaks that one up the middle. Great base running by, by everybody. Cost getting the third, and then Lewis getting that, that nice double right there. So Lewis now with 31 extra base hits on the year. That's his 18th double to go along with those 13 home runs. 
And that sets the table for Adrian Dabla, who has been very tough in these kinds of situations of late, as that average coming in over 300. Yeah, we could go tonight. Dabla had a, had a great big, big night with a, with a couple double, three doubles. Um, really like to get him going, protecting Lewis here, and this is a big spot to get this run early in the game. So Dabla who got off to a very good start in his freshman season in his career here at UC Irvine, dipped during his sophomore campaign, but now has come back strong here in 2019 and has emerged as the everyday first baseman for UC Irvine. Yeah, here, here's a challenge for the hitter here. You got, you got a ground ball pitcher, probably not going to give him something in the heart of the plate, has first base opens, but you do want that RBI as a hitter. So really using the middle of the field here. It doesn't have to be even a hit, but, but you know, use the middle ground ball there you go get that get that early rbi right there and that's going to bring a run home the throw almost pulled briggs off the bag but it was in time and domla does his job able to bring that run home the anteaters hitting to the right side of the infield and they take that one nothing lead yeah it doesn't look like much but you know you get that that early run you let Blonte settle in you put a little pressure on uc davis it's just a great way to start the weekend off And here is Mike Peabody. And Peabody has really flourished on the scene here in 2019. The sophomore out of nearby Tustin and modern day high school here in Orange County. And has so many great tools as he drives this one to the alleyway at left center field. Long run for Morrison, but he tracks it down at the warning track. But the Anteaters jump in front after the double by Lewis, the ground out by Dabla, 1-0 UCI. Maytag knows extra dirty clothes need extra cleaning power. That's why the power of the extra power button makes Maytag extra powerful. Wow. Dirt doesn't stand a chance against this kind of power. Get a load of this. That laundry is stacked. Not bad, huh? May is Maytag month. Get great deals on powerful Maytag appliances right now. Are you broke before payday? No worries. Just download Dave. Dave can spot you up to 75 bucks because a little extra cash can go a long way. Don't wait. Download Dave now for your advance. See Irvine jumps in front, one nothing in this Friday night series opener with UC Davis here at Ann Ader Ballpark. And these two programs, well, long history between them, as this is now the 43rd meeting all time. UC Davis, though, took the series last year with these two programs, Division Two to Division One. Long history between these two. Yeah, and it should be another another great weekend here. Coach Vaughn, you know, talks about they've played pretty good baseball against Big West teams this year, you know, and it gives a lot of confidence for his players moving forward, just understanding they can play with the big boys. So Spencer Getstad leading things off now for UC Davis against Andre Palante, who worked a 1-2-3 first inning for UCI. Yeah, if you're UC Davis, just just make Palante work. You know, go up there and, and every, you know, every pitch, you're working as hard as you can. You, you don't want to, you know, be giving away any free at bats for Palante. You, you know, you know you're in for it, anyways. But you got to make him work. So Palante. Going back to that fastball. And how he's developed that four pitch mix this year and last year as well, but really has done well with his command of the slider and the curveball. If you throw in that fastball, it really has you guessing at the plate. And I imagine from your career, AK, and just trying to handle someone with a four pitch mix with a fastball that you have to get ready for on each and every pitch, but if they have command of that breaking ball, it makes it so tough. 
you know, you're exactly right, Tim, and that's why he's had so much success. And, you know, playing high-level summer stuff, USA Baseball, you know, he, he, he knows, he, you learn how to pitch in those situations, playing against international teams and, and experienced hitters, and he's really taken over and matured as a, as a pit, well-rounded pitcher. But, yeah, as a hitter, I mean, that's that's the challenge, you know. You, you have to stay on the fastball every pitch, but in the back of your mind kind of understand this pitcher has control of everything. You got your work cut out for you. So he gets his first strikeout of the night against Gedstad. Here's Lara. Is Alejandro. Getting that start tonight. Fifth in the lineup for Matt Vaughn. And Lara putting together a nice season so far, playing defensively out in right field. Yeah, offensively, he's, he's been great. You know, inserted in there pretty much every day. You know, 323 and with a little power behind it. You know, Ten doubles, three homers. Coach Vaughn will take that every day of the week. And a guy who's shown great plate discipline as well. He's worked 23 walks on the year. And so yet again, he finds himself ahead in a count. I mean, that walk number... Very impressive, and that has led to his on-base percentage at almost 440 on the season. High chop for Lewis, and a high throw, and see that it's an out. Apparently, Laura thought it was a foul ball. He thought that he hit it off, possibly of home plate. And having a discussion with Sean Rakos about where that ball originally came off of his bat. And that will go as a ground out. So five in a row retired by Palante. It sounded kind of funny. I thought there might have something might have been up with that. And, and so did the hitter, but uh, nobody else on the field quite saw it. You really couldn't see anything. But but off the bat, I thought it might have hit his hit his foot as well. It's Cam Briggs, now the hitter, this senior out of Sun Valley here in the Burbank area here in Southern California, up in L.A. County. So what have you liked so far from Andre Pallante, A.K.? He's really not wasting a whole lot of pitches. He's kind of going after these guys, and, and you know, that's the benefit of, of having an early lead. You know, you can stay aggressive, and a benefit of, of this ballpark as well, really make the, make the hitters prove that they're going to be able to drive the ball off you. First time through the order. What goes through your head here? Just try to see pitches, get that game plan, hone that game plan a little bit? Yeah, it's, it's a fine line because you if you go up there trying to see too many pitches you you know you get in the hole and with a good pitcher like Palante, he's going to take advantage of that so just kind of that balance of being aggressive in the zone early on well Palante has retired the first six he has faced tonight one nothing and eaters as we go to the home half of inning number two maytag knows extra dirty clothes need extra cleaning power that's why the power of the extra power button makes Maytag extra powerful. Wow. Dirt doesn't stand a chance against this kind of power. Get a load of this. That laundry is stacked. Not bad, huh? May is Maytag month. Get great deals on powerful Maytag appliances right now. Are you broke before payday? No worries, just download Dave. Dave can spot you up to 75 bucks because a little extra cash can go a long way. Don't wait. Download Dave now for your advance. A lot of fun out here at the ballpark, and Eater Ballpark, on a gorgeous start to a Southern California weekend. And wow, temperatures in the high 60s. And supposed to be around the same tomorrow as well here on the campus of UC Irvine. Beautiful facility here. You see that scoreboard out there in left field that was 
brought onto the scene last year. And this field here so well kept by this grounds crew. It reminds you of a major league style field. It is. It's a great park. They've done some great additions to it with the new Kirk Pavilion over here behind Irvine's dugout. Um, you got the berm over UC Davis' dugout. It's, it's a great place to come watch a game. Everybody loves this field. This is this field, Coach uh, Orloff, he, he really opens it up in the offseason for a lot of the big leaguers come here and hit and work out. And it's Connor Zikafuz, who was the transfer from Chapman University, as he greets Brett Irwin rudely here, and the Anteaters have their second hit. And that's, that's the best approach possible right there off of Irwin. You know, you know you're not going to get a lot of velocity. He's going to make you work and, and really stay on that ball, drive the ball up the middle right there. Irvine, you know, I, I can tell these hitters kind of are aware of that. Uh, other than Palmer kind of rolling over in the first inning, all the other lefties have kind of, you, you know, stayed through it, been up the middle. Good, good game plan. Now Griffin Mazur, who has really taken control of that starting catcher's spot over the last three plus weeks of this season. And Mazur's numbers with the bat have improved as this season has gone along. He's now making his 23rd start tonight, so he'll try to pick things up with Zikafus over there at first base. Yeah, a good example in the past, you know, the sack bunt situation. But nowadays, really letting the hitters drive the ball. I mean, it's a, it's a great swing right there. You know, you continue to let your hitters do that. It's going to pay off for you at the end of the day more so than not. So Kelly there to haul that one in, and that's the first out of the inning. And so it will be Mikey Falia, and Falia, who comes from a great family tree of athletes. As if you remember, his brother Eric Falia was a member of UCLA's national championship squad in baseball under John Savage a few years back. This is where this is where Orloff probably thinking about you know using, utilizing that hit and run. You have your eight nine hitters here who handle the bat really well. You got a ground ball pitcher. Great time to put the runner in motion, and make something happen. You know, going back to those off season workouts, AK. Okay, I mean, again, you're right. It, it's important for these guys and and the major leaguers during the off season to have a facility nearby to be able to continue to stay in tune, stay fresh with things during the off season. And this UCI facility has really been a top notch one for major leaguers who live in the area. Yeah, I mean, any, any, everything from the ca great cage situation over here, we used to hit in the cages a lot. Um, and now, now the guys come out here, hit on the field, take their ground balls. It's a nice place to come. You can't, can't, can't argue with the weather, just the field, the maintenance, everything has, has been great. And Orloff and his staff do a good job of, of opening up to everybody. That one skipped away from Denholm a little bit there, but not enough for Zikafus to advance. Tefalia got off to a red hot start this season. Get yours, and trying to regain a hot bat here late in the season. And he's able to work the walk. So the Anteaters now with runners at first and second and one out. And Sam Ireland, who has come onto the scene for UC Irvine, came onto the scene in, in mid-season to take over as the starting second baseman. And Ireland had to learn of the ropes right now, making his 23rd start, but has been effective hitting in the nine hole and also defensively at second base. Yeah, that was a good bat by Philia there. Just really, especially that three one pitch, not a bad pitch at all, but just good discipline to, to really lay off it. It, it, was a, it was a pitcher's pitch and had ground ball kind of written all over it, but he laid off it. Now we got a little rally going. So Ireland, another Orange County product out of nearby Mission Viejo, just down the freeway from this UC Irvine campus. Or 
little atypical of Ir Irwin here. He's, he's kind of nibbling a little bit, you know, especially at the bottom of the order. Your 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 best pitch is, is a sinker. You use it, utilize that left side of the infield here, and try to get that double play. He's kind of nibbling a little bit too much, for me. Irwin looking to get ahead here on one and one. And this could be two. As Van Blake to Smith to Briggs in time for the inning ending double play. Five, four to three to end it. And the Anteaters are done here in the second. Still one nothing UCI as we go to the third. Maytag knows extra dirty clothes need extra cleaning power. That's why the power of the extra power button makes Maytag extra powerful. Wow. Dirt doesn't stand a chance against this kind of power. Get a load of this. That laundry is stacked. Not bad, huh? May is Maytag month. Get great deals on powerful Maytag appliances right now. When you rent a car on Turo, you're renting from a real person. No shuttle rides, no waiting in line, and no wandering a car lot. This is your rental counter. And this is you, already on the road. With Turo, this is compact, standard, and full size. This is better than your typical car rental. This is Turo. Download the app today. UC Davis trying to figure out Andre Pallante in his UCI pitching. As we go to the top of the third inning, as Pallante has set down the first six that he has faced, struck out two along the way. And we'll go into the numbers and look at the pitching comparison here in UC Irvine with that team ERA, second best in the Big West. That strikeout number also impressive as well. And the strikeouts per nine innings, UC Davis, they are missing one of their primetime starters from last year with an injury. They've had to reboot things. And so Matt Vaughn and his club, especially the bullpen, it's been a little bit of a struggle here in 2019. Yeah, you know, in these top conferences, Big West especially, where you have your top tier teams, you know, and then, and then you know, UC Davis, UC Riverside, who kind of have to battle recruiting-wise with them, you really, your, your depth in your pitching is going to be huge. And once you take, take a hit or two from your, your top guys, um, it's tough to replace them. And, and the depth just really is an advantage towards a team like Irvine. So Kelly, who comes in with good power number six home runs on this season, but lines right to Lewis for the first out. So seven in a row, retired by Palante to start tonight. And here is Logan Denholm. And again, Denholm, a familiar name around this Irvine campus with his younger brother Trenton Denholm one of the top pitchers on the West Coast this year and amongst the national leaders in a few categories as well but Logan Denholm certainly making a name for himself at UC Davis with the catching duties and he's shown it to the plate this year hitting over 300. Yeah he, he's a great athlete uh, coach Vaughn and the staff put, put a lot on, on his shoulders as far as his game calling and, and dealing with the pitching staff and he's had a great year offensively it's good to see when a catcher puts in all that work get a little success at the plate so the Denholm brothers very close they talk to each other frequently on the phone they probably compare some notes as well <laughs> with each other on opponents especially in conference during the course of the season yeah definitely I'd say There'll be something on the line for tomorrow's outcome. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, last year, they were able to face each other for the first time competitively in a college game. And I believe Trenton may have hit Logan with a pitch, I think, in their first at bat, <laughs> in Logan's first at bat. And a swing and a miss here. So, Pallante. Start to rack up the strikeouts now. Three strikeouts. He has struck out three of the last five that he has faced. Yeah, but your mom didn't like that one too much, right? <laughs> That's right. She's seen, she's seen enough of that in her whole life. <laughs> Probably had to separate them after uh, after the game was over. You go to your room, you go to your room. So here is Jalen Smith. 
As Palante really in the zone to start this game. Now he's retired the first eight he has faced. Jalen's kind of taking over second base. He, he, nice turn from third base to end, to end that in, last inning there. Not an easy turn for a second baseman, third baseman making throw on the run. N nice turn. Yeah, for a freshman to show what he has shown defensively, you have to be impressed with what Jalen Smith has done. Proctor of the, of the uh, Central Valley out of Bakersfield. Palante really trying to extend right there. Yeah, probably a little frustrated with himself, you know. Things have been going pretty smoothly. Two outs here, you got the nine hitter up, and, and you're falling behind early. Not exactly what he's, he's hoping for. Probably a little frustrated on that last pitch. And he misses upstairs again. First base runner for UC Davis on the evening. First walk for Palante. And back we go to the top of the lineup, and now Palante has his hands full. With Smith over there at first base, good speed. And Tanner Murray, one of the top hitters on the West Coast in college baseball, now coming to home plate. Yeah, that's where you see Davis. You know, anytime you can get runners on base for, for Murray in the top of the order here, this is where you can do some damage. So if you're the hitter, AK, you see the pitcher who was in a rhythm, going so well, then all of a sudden miss on four straight pitches. What are you thinking with your approach here? That the next one's probably going to be down the middle. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, and it, you know, it's part of the mental battle you have as a hitter. You know, you see the pitcher a little wild, you know, and you want to make them get back in the zone, but you also know. Now they have Smith picked off. It's dropped by Domla and Smith into second base. So just what UC Davis needed right there. And now a runner in scoring position for the second best hitter in the Big West Conference. Yeah, Jalen Smith got a little antsy over there at first base. Is the right-hander on the mound, you don't really need to cheat that much. He did, he got picked, but then Demel just, just dropped the ball and, and now we have man on second base for UC Davis' best hitter, one of the best hitters in the conference up. So just what Matt Vaughn wanted to see now with his main man up there. You know, and, and if you're Irvine, these are the kind of things you can't let happen throughout the series. You know, you, you know you're in a better situation standing-wise than UC Davis. And, and to kind of let them take advantage of, of opportunities you're giving them, kind of shoot yourself in the foot, you can't let that happen throughout the weekend. You really got to just play good baseball, win these games you're supposed to win, and try to get into the regional here. And you look at that number. Plante, a strikeout pitcher, but one every 3.2 plate appearances for strikeouts for Tanner Murray. So a tough customer is Murray, who's now ahead of the count. Yeah, you, you can see right there with that pitch. Good pitch from Plante, but, but even a better layoff by Murray. Really good idea to play for a young hitter. To Murray from Ben Lomond, California, San Lorenzo Valley High School, and just a sophomore. So that average coming into the week, getting closer to 400, and a swing and a miss here. So two and two, big pitch. Obviously from the pitcher's vantage point, you want to go with your best pitch here because you don't want to go to three and two on one of the top hitters in college baseball this year. But as the hitter, what are you thinking here on this 2-2 pitch? Well, you know, you. It's a little scary because you got first base open, so you know he's not going to give you anything too good to hit. So you really got to keep working hard. You know, take your base hit to right field. Take take your base hit. Don't try to do too much. Again, you're just because it's three two. Wouldn't be surprised to see something you know out of the zone a little bit, close enough to maybe take a swing at, but but nothing too too great to hit. So it's a tough job as a hitter. So Murray with a payoff pitch coming from Palante with two outs and the runner at second base. 
And this one fouled away, so a good battle going on between two of the premier players in the Big West Conference. Murray's just got a calm little confidence about him. Uh, Coach Vaughn and the staff love how, you know, he he brings that, that quiet, that confidence of loose, being loose and having fun. Uh, he's talked, he, he talked a lot about what Tanner uh, Murray has brought to him and, and the things he's taught him about, taught Coach Vaughn about uh, letting these kids have fun and not everything has to be so serious all the time. And Murray will bring the tying run home. This one to the alleyway in right center. Smith will score easily. Murray on his way to third, and he will be in there with a slide. A game-tying triple for Tanner Murray. His fourth triple of the year, his 30th RBI, and we are tied at one. Yeah, great piece of hitting right there. He went 2-2 curveball off the plate, 3-2 fastball foul ball and then back to the slider curveball and and Tanner Murray does a great job of really staying on it putting it in the gap for his team lead and fourth triple what, what a great at bat right there all the way around good young hitter right there fun fun for me to see so the Aggies patient at the plate in this inning have tied things and now the go-ahead run only 90 feet away for Cooper Morrison yeah you know Irvine he, Dama drops the ball when you have a, you have a runner picked off with the best hitter, you know, in the lineup at the plate. You know, can't let those sort of opportunities slip away right there. Otherwise, you, you get burned. So Pallante really fighting it right now. You can tell he is not comfortable up on the mound. Yeah, the the, the four pitch walk to Jalen Smith kind of something in that at bat got him a little flustered and hasn't quite been right since. So Morrison in a big spot here in the top of the third as takes that one away. And now it's quickly 2-0. And Van Blake is on deck for UC Davis, who has four home runs on the season. This one hit well to center field, but Falia has it all the way. But you see Davis squares things up as Murray delivers with a two out RBI triple for tied at one. Extra power button, extra power button. You're looking buff. May is Maytag month. Get great deals on powerful Maytag appliances right now. When you rent a car on Turo, you're renting from a real person. No shuttle rides, no waiting in line, and no wandering a car lot. This is your rental counter. And this is you, already on the road. With Turo, this is compact, standard, and full size. This is better than your typical car rental. This is Turo. Download the app today. The big bat of Tanner Murray ties things up for UC Davis in the top of the third. UC Irvine will look to respond here at Anteater Ballpark on this gorgeous late spring evening on the campus of UC Irvine. The opener of this Big West Conference three-game weekend series as Brett Irwin back to work now and a game deadlocked at one. So the Anteaters will have the top third of their order here. Palmer. And Palmer with that ground out back in the first inning, then Koss and then Lewis. Yeah, really need a good big about from Palmer here. Kind of get back on track. I think. Irvine kind of feel like they lost a little momentum with that last inning, inning, inning there, giving up that, that two-out run, kind of giving a gift there to Davis and, and try to get the top of the lineup, get that momentum back. The number that really sticks out for Palmer, 34 walks on the year. That has led to a 426 on base percentage for Jake. And that's why Orloff loves him at the top, just consistently great at bats, making those pitchers work. 
And that on-base per percentage just hit a very high clip. And so Palmer will foul it off here. We'll stay at one and two. Jake, the younger brother of Grant Palmer, who was a mainstay for UC Irvine here for four years of his career and was part of that 2014 College World Series team with the Anteaters. So Jake continuing the Palmer legacy at UCI, and he lines this one the opposite way for a base hit. Yeah, that's sort of the first really good swing for Palmer this game off of Irwin. He's kind of been rolling over a little bit, kind of pulling off, but, but that's what happens when you're not healthy enough to have consistent at bats. You kind of fight it. But that was a great adjustment right there by Palmer for a leadoff single. And so Christian Koss will be the hitter. Koss got things started back in that first inning for the Anteaters. Walked and came around to score on an RBI ground out from Adrian Domla. What are the tools that really stick out to you, AK, for Christian Koss and why he will be on the scouts' radars and on the on the Major League Baseball draft board radar. Well, yeah. First thing first, you know, any shortstop playing at this level, is, you know, everybody's eyes go to him. You know, you walk into the park, and if you're a scout, you know, you, you want to know who's playing shortstop. Then, you know, you look at his size, great size, and how he moves around. Very athletic, uh, great arm, plays the game. With a lot of ease out there, um, not a whole lot to not like when you watch him. His bat a little bit long from time to time, but but you know that's probably not going to be his strong point. And, and as long as he can hit some, he, he's going to have a job for a long time. And as a good infielder in college, you know. Not to say it gets easier, but but it, there is a sense of with the wood bats, it's easier to play defense a little bit in the infield. You get a little bit more true read off the bat. Um, you can kind of tell when it's off the end or jam shot a little bit better. So so defensively, I think he's just going to continue to thrive and get better on the left side of the infield. How tough was that for you, the adjustment going from the college uh, aluminum bat? to the professional wood bat. How long did that take for you to make that hitting, transition? Hitting wise? Yeah. I'm still waiting for that adjustment <laughs> to happen. <laughs> no, 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 no. Hey, you didn't play 14 years without uh, being being pretty good handling that, that wood bat. Yeah, you know, I don't think you have if you can hit, you're going to find a way to continue to do so at whatever level you're at. And then, then, you know, as you get older, you just get better at your craft and you take little bits and pieces from, from your college coaches to your minor league coaches to uh, hitting coordinators, your teammates. Um, there's a lot of, when you're playing professionally, it's a lot of baseball talk. A lot of, you know, you're out on the field a lot and on a day-to-day -day basis. So you're, you're le constantly learning and picking up little things to help you out and it's always a, a, a fun thing to get better at your trade and Koss works the walk and by the way AK I don't think the Minnesota Twins think you struggled with the bat I know that well for sure. you know <laughs> sometimes when you're just hanging out at the bottom of the order a la Jalen Smith last inning the pitcher kind of loses <laughs> loses a focus on you and and you can take advantage of it from time to time so the Anteaters have something going here. Runners at first and second, nobody out. And this is someone that Irwin does not want to see in this kind of situation. Brandon Lewis with the year that he is having the transfer from Pierce Community College up in the San Fernando Valley here in Southern California. <laughs> and Lewis coming off a monster season last year at the JC level, and he's putting together another fine season here at the Division I level. Yeah, I don't think Irwin's given himself enough credit tonight, you know. He's kind of, you know, being a little bit too nitpicky with his pitches against these right-handed right hitters. You know, Palmer laid off with the base hit there. 
if I'm if in Irwin's case because he's so great at the double play ball with the right hand to hitter up, take advantage of it, really really pound that zone, make Cost be a, a great hitter and, and do something with that sinker. And Lewis gets a hold of this one deep towards left field, back on it, Morrison, and it is gone. Number 14 on the year for Brandon Lewis. He brings home three, now 52 RBIs on the year to lead the Big West Conference, and the Anteaters respond in a big way and go back in front. Yeah, you know, and when you do that, when you when you aren't using your advantage, like like Brett Irwin has that that ground ball strength in him, and you pitch around guys and and you, and you walk the number two hitter, and, and then you're faced with the challenge of of dealing with Brandon Lewis here and. He does what he does. Does what he, he is great at driving in runs, and in this case, three of them with one swing. Full extension there for Brandon Lewis, and he just knew <laughs> off the bat that this one was out of here. And Tomlin now trying to continue things. Still nobody out in this inning. That'll make Plante feel better. He was a little frustrated coming off the mound that last inning, probably at himself, and maybe Domlin at first base with with the drop ball. So. For his team to, to really have some good at bats, backing him up, get him that three spot. Now he can kind of settle back in, not quite as frustrated, and, and hopefully get back to his power game. A little bit tougher play for Briggs right there. He had to back up on that baseball, but in a tough sun field, he kind of let the ball play him a little bit, but in time to get Damo there. Playing at that second base spot, did, did, obviously that is tough in that sun field. Second base, first base, right field as well. What did you have to be cognizant when you were fighting that sun? Well, lots of challenges, really. Yeah. You know, you try to position yourself maybe a little bit where you get a little different angle off the bat, maybe out of position where you would normally play, put your hat down, use your glove, all kinds of tricks, tricks of the trade to, to figure out a way to, to battle the sun. So Mike Peabody at the plate. And quickly 0-2. I know you're familiar with the Peabody family, AK, and obviously the father, Mike's dad, Tom, playing with those great LMU basketball teams at Loyola Marymount with Hank Gathers and Bo Kimball back in the late 80s and early 90s. And then Mike, Pot Mike Peabody just continuing that athletic legacy within the family. So many tools that he has. Yeah, I, I do a lot of stuff with youth baseball around town and, and st I coached Mike at, at Modern Day for a few years and still to this day he is the number, number one athlete that I've coached uh, around town and uh, he's, a, he's a great kid. Comes, like you said, comes from a great athletic family and, and hopefully he has a bright future. He's starting to settle in here at the college level. Another kid that could benefit from a good summer going into his junior year next year. There's two outs for Zikafus and Connor with a base hit in his first at bat. Irwin tonight has walked three, but the bad thing about that for Irwin and just to accentuate that is the fact that two of those batters that have walked have come home to score so far. Yeah, just kind of a self-inflicted wound. He's, he's really shooting himself in the foot with those walks to cost. He, you know, is a right-handed pitcher, sinker slider guy, you know, I'd like to make these hitters earn their way on. And he really hasn't done it to cost, especially, you know, the base hits you can deal with, but it's those walks to, to the right-handed hitters is probably a little frustrating for him. So even up now with Zikafu's two and two. So the Anteaters here in the third inning coming right back. The three-run home run from Brandon Lewis off of Trent Irwin before the first out was recorded in this frame. So Irvine in must-win mode over these final six games of the Big West Conference season. And Zikafus now earns a two-out walk. So another base runner for the Anteaters. Now four walks on the evening for Trent Irwin. Brent Irwin. And here's Griffin Mazur. 
Yeah, a little bit out of character for, for Brett tonight. Just, you know, only 18 walks on, on the year coming in, and, and tonight just a little bit off. You, know, you, you start to wonder, you know, tale of two teams where this is UC Davis's last conference, you know, series. So are, are the kids losing focus a little bit? You know, it, it's a possibility. And then on the flip side, Irvine, they're really starting to, you know, have playoff hopes and, and playoff sights. So they're kind of zoning it in a little bit and really getting ready to just just take off. So a little different vibes probably on each team. So Irwin, in this inning, fighting it. Like Pallante fought it in the top half of this third inning. Difference is that Irwin doesn't have Brandon Lewis on his squad. There's Lewis with that three-run shot off of Irwin for his 14th home run of the year. And so UCI now with that three-run cushion. Yeah, Irvine, they just have the, the makings of, of a team that has a chance to make some noise in, in a regional. You know, you have great starting pitching in Plante you know, on your Friday night guy. Domla, I'm oh, sorry, Denholm backing him up on, on Saturday. You have a great shortstop. You have Lewis in the middle of the order who's a born to drive in runs. So team team settle in a little bit here. And if they get these regionals, definitely make some noise. And that's been kind of UCI's M.O. over the years when they've gotten into the postseason. Good pitching, timely hitting, playing a little bit of small ball, and they simply just get overlooked sometimes in these regionals, and the Anteaters have been able to thrive, obviously, with eight regionals appearances since the program returned in 2002. They've been to the Super Regionals four times and a couple of College World Series appearances as well in 2007 and 2014. And they love that surprise kind of underdog role when they get to the postseason. And they have the makings of a team that can do that again. Yeah, and you know with Orloff, even though he's a first year head coach, you know, his success as a player college level and then as a head assistant you know he he's not going to be overwhelmed by by the pressure of a playoff or a regional i think the kids will thrive under him and he i'm sure he has some some good information passing along to these guys to have some success here the, the towards the end of the year yeah these young anteaters love playing for ben orloff brooks wallace award winner is the nation's top shortstop when he was here at uc irvine Terrific hitter that he became as well over the course of his career with the Anteaters. Yeah, and for Coach Orloff, all of these kids he recruited personally. So you build that relationship with them when you're when you're in Arizona watching them play, when you're at all their summer ball games, you know, and you they know you're in the field watching them, you know, and a lot of times you don't get that relationship with the head coach. But but he had, had built that relationship with them prior to this year and now to have them playing for him and him being the head guy that relationship will never go away it just just get stronger at that point so Irwin in the inning has walked three he has surrendered a couple hits including that three run home run to Brandon Lewis five walks now in the ball game for Irwin
So if you are Matt Bond, you are really watching every single pitch now in, intently just to see how Irwin is doing. And you see Davis at this point, if the damage gets much worse, may have to think about making a change possibly. Irwin trying to stay in this game. Yeah, you know, when we talked to Coach Vaughn early in the week, you know, you can kind of tell what he thinks of a player and and, his, and talking about Irwin. And, and the one thing he said was he pounds his own. We don't have to worry about him. He's going to pound the zone. And tonight it's kind of been the opposite. So um, as, as good as he's been all year long, just a little bit fighting himself tonight. And it, it's, it's uh, not going as smoothly. As Van Blake crossed the diamond and barely in time. A nice stretch there by Briggs. But the Anteaters respond on the three-run shot to left from Lewis, his 14th of the season, 4-1, Eaters. Hi, we're Warby Parker, an eyewear company that offers high-quality glasses starting at $95, including prescription lenses. Our frames are designed in-house and made from premium materials like cellulose acetate and lightweight titanium and include scratch-resistant and anti-reflective lens coatings. It may sound too good to be true, but we believe glasses can be well-made, stylish, and affordable, and have set out to prove that with every pair. Try five frames for free today at warbyparker.com. When you rent a car on Turo, you're renting from a real person. No shuttle rides, no waiting in line, and no wandering a car lot. This is your rental counter. And this is you, already on the road. With Turo, this is compact, standard, and full-size. This is better than your typical car rental. This is Turo. Download the app today. Well, just like that, after Andre Pallante surrendered the tying run, his teammate Brandon Lewis gives him a lead, a three-run cushion following that big blast to left field. And Pallante, one of these fine UC Irvine hurlers, there is the pitching coach Danny Babona, who is a fine UCI hurler himself, and what a staff he has put together this year. And you look at where the Anteaters rank in the conference and nationally, so impressive. Yeah, I mean, first all over the board here that, you know, Irvine is just known for, for throwing out great pitching staffs, and this year is definitely no different. Yeah, the Anteaters, you, you look at that walks per nine innings and, and whip as well, strikeout to walk ratio. And the way that they've been able to turn things around on the mound after, for Irvine standards, struggling over the last couple of years. They were more known for their offense and their offensive firepower in recent seasons. Good, it makes the games more fun. <laughs> Nobody wants to see one nothing games all week, right? <laughs> so, the Anteaters back to their, uh, back to their roots ever since bringing the, the uh, program back in 2002. So here's Caleb Van Blake, and Van Blake looking to get something started against Andre Pallante. So Pallante struggled with his command last inning, and now behind here in the count, two and one. And will this be playable? And over near the Irvine dugout, and Lewis right along the railing. They're able to reel it in. Yeah, I can see why, why Coach is a little frustrated or just kind of, you know, Caleb hasn't been great all year long. His swings are pretty good. He's just a tick off, you know, and then you have some bad luck where, where the ball doesn't quite get to the seats and you, and you foul out. Just kind of... Kind of the way the year's been for Caleb Van Blake. Always nice to be in front of your own dugout, too. <laughs> <laughs> Friendly hands over there helping you out. That's right. The other team throwing seeds at you, just <laughs> trying to make a play. <laughs> no. Well, they would never do that. Come on now. No, that, not that cheap. <laughs> uh -huh. 
I can imagine, though, as a fielder that uh, the verbiage is not very pleasant sometimes. Yeah, you know, probably more so from the fans than the other players. You yeah. know, you're, you're not really loud talking to each other out there <laughs> um, in a situation like that. Yeah. The one thing you just feel more comfortable at is your teammates are probably going to catch you if you have to go into the dugout. <laughs> and the visiting dugout, yeah. they may, may let you fall on your face a little bit. <laughs> so Gedstad standing in for the Aggies. So Gedstad, Southern California product down the road in San Diego from Point Loma High School. So Getstad been solid at the heart of the lineup this year for Davis. That average close to 330 to begin the week. As Domla in foul ground over his shoulder. Nice backhand grab there for the second out. Nice job by UC Irvine defensively in foul territory in this inning. Yeah, we talk about the athletes they have all over the field and, and you know, the two that we didn't talk about mostly have, have made two back-to-back -back pretty good uh, plays in foul territory, but just good athletes all over the field out here. So Laura will be the hitter. And Alejandro, we talked about those 23 walks on this season. And then on base percentage, being so high this year. Yeah, I mean, good good slugging percentage numbers. You know, 10 doubles, three homers. Coach Vaughn, just, you know, he talked about he's one of the guys, Lars, one of the guys he talked about has been carrying the offense, and, and they have some physical guys as well. I, I, I like the way these guys approach it. They've just been a, a tick off, but, but again, Palante has, has quite a bit to do with that. He's He's not, easy, not the easiest pitcher to, to go up there and drive the ball off. And Palante has found the zone after struggling last inning. Four strikeouts now for Andre Palante. The Anteaters with that three-run cushion as we go to the home half. Hi, we're Warby Parker, an eyewear company that offers high-quality glasses starting at $95, including prescription lenses. Our frames are designed in-house and made from premium materials like cellulose acetate and lightweight titanium and include scratch-resistant and anti-reflective lens coatings. It may sound too good to be true, but we believe glasses can be well-made, stylish, and affordable and have set out to prove that with every pair. Try five frames for free today at warbyparker.com. When you rent a car on Turo, you're renting from a real person. No shuttle rides, no waiting in line, and no wandering a car lot. This is your rental counter. And this is you, already on the road. With Turo, this is compact, standard, and full size. This is better than your typical car rental. This is Turo. Download the app today. Well, Brandon Lewis showing off his big bat here on a Friday night at Anteater Ballpark, taking Brett Irwin out of the yard, a three-run shot to give UC Irvine a four-to-one lead. And AK, he got that full extension and took it out of here. He did. You can kind of see the catcher, you know, one it down and away. And as, as Irwin kind of released, you see the catcher kind of bring his glove back towards the middle of the plate, what we call a hanger. And he didn't miss it. So Lewis with that home run is 14th on the year. And now 52 runs batted in for Lewis, who leads the Big West in that department. So Irwin trying to settle things down here in the fourth, as it'll be Ireland at the bottom of the lineup card for Ben Orlov. And then back to the top with Palmer and Koss. That pitch right there is a good indication, you know, Irwin's just not on his game tonight. You have your, your nine hitter up and your first pitch, you, you yank a slider down and away. You know, in that situation, if you're going to throw a slider, you know, you'd like to get ahead in the count with one, but he just, he's not quite on his game tonight. Hopefully he can kind of keep 
keep Irvine at bay here and, and, and you know let his offense kind of get going. But he needs to uh, eat up some innings with some zeros at this point. Yeah, you, you can definitely tell the confidence just not quite there for Irwin. And he came in again, 18 walks and 65 in the third innings. Pitch, so a performance like this is really something that has been rare for Irwin this year. Yeah, you know, and I mean, his, his numbers are great. You know, the coaching staff loves him. The, his players behind him probably love playing be, behind him. He, they know there's a lot of action, you know, and, and with the pitcher that doesn't overpower your velocity, you're going to have some nights where you do balls find holes more, more so than not, and, you know, you just have some bad luck. It, you know, that has been the case. He's kind of given Irvine extra base runners. He's kind of, you know, his pitches haven't been spot on. So a little bit, you know, out of the ordinary for, for Irwin tonight in, get, in giving up these runs. To Palmer, got the anteater started last inning as his single, followed by Koss's walk, put runners at first and second, and that was followed by Lewis's home run to left field, and Palmer back at it. So back in the lineup and hitting well again as he takes this one to the opposite field for the second time tonight. Uh, for, for a left-handed hitter, you can have that discipline to, to not try to do too much with the pitch. His last two bats with line drives to left field is exactly what you would love to do off a p p little sinker ball pitcher about that 85 mile an hour range. You stay disciplined, you can, you can do that all day long right there. The hard part is staying disciplined and not trying to do too much with that pitch. But, but once again, you know, Irvine, Irvine kind of getting that groove of, you know, Palmer at the top and feeling healthy. And if they can, you know, get everybody going how they would, they would like, should be a fun, you know, end of the year here. Yeah, what Palmer provides at the top of the lineup is, is so key for the Anteaters as cost goes the other way, but playable for Kelly. And that's the second out of the inning. And here's Lewis. So Brandon out of Porter Ranch and played his high school baseball, Alamany High School in the San Fernando Valley. And then went to the junior college ranks. And the numbers that he put up last season at Pierce Community College in the San Fernando Valley. And you look at there, and part of the Golden Spikes Award watch list. But last year at Pierce College, hitting 408 with 23 home runs and 94 runs batted in. And Lewis has made a seamless transition to the Division I level. And one of the premier big bats on the West Coast in college baseball. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it matters where he plays. He's going to hit. He has a great idea at the plate, what he's doing. You know, he's not afraid to, to work the right side of the, of the field. You know, his power to all fields. You know, even the first to bat on his base hit kind of fooled, kept his hands back for a base hit, and then and the power numbers with the hanging slider for, for a big three-run homer. And then, really good feeling to come back up again the next inning right after a three-run homer. Opposite field this time, and Laura has a play. And the Anteaters are done here in the fourth. You see Irvine at 4-1 lead over Davis as we go to the fifth. Hi, we're Warby Parker an eyewear company that offers high-quality glasses starting at $95, including prescription lenses. Our frames are designed in-house and made from premium materials like cellulose acetate and lightweight titanium and include scratch-resistant and anti-reflective lens coatings. It may sound too good to be true, but we believe glasses can be well-made, stylish, and affordable and have set out to prove that with every pair. Try five frames for free today at warbyparker.com. When you rent a car on Turo, you're renting from a real person. No shuttle rides, no waiting in line, and no wandering a car lot. This is your rental counter. And this is you, already on the road. With Turo, this is compact, standard, and full-size. This is better than your typical car rental. 
This is Turo. Download the app today. You see Irvine riding the big bat of Brandon Lewis tonight, but also the big arm of Andre Pallante. Four strikeouts so far for the junior out of San Clemente, who is back on his game. Yeah, that fastball has some good life on it right there. And, and you know, he's finishing these guys off with, with that high fastball, you know, throughout the, the bat, you know, making them kind of be aware of the slider, be aware of the off-speed pitch, and then really elevating the fastball through the zone there with some good velocity in the 90s. Yeah, this is where Andre ranks in the Big West Conference. You look at those strikeouts looking at 26 on the year, and that's about the fastball, but also about the off-speed pitches as well and the breaking stuff. Well, for me, it says the hitters, they know he can throw any pitch, any count for a strike. So as a hitter, you're, you're kind of off balance a little bit. You're, you're not really sure there's, you know, the percentages obviously don't say he's, he's you know, throwing a certain pitch at a high percentage in, in certain counts. So he's keeping the hitters off balance by being able to throw multiple pitches in the zone. So it'll be Briggs, Kelly, and Denholm for the Aggies here at the top of the fifth. And Pallante, after that freshman season, had a lot of work to do to get up to speed and get himself on track at the college level as he's now ahead 0-2 on Briggs here. But Polante went to summer ball, Cape Cod League, and really was able to hone and get command of those pitches and just became a whole new pitcher going into last season and hence that 10-1 record a year ago and the All-American accolades. Yeah, when, when you go play these high-level summer programs, whether it be Cape, USA, you know, you, you have different coaches that maybe teach you a little something here and there. You, you really have to be at your peak performance because you're playing against top competition. Uh, summer ball in college is a lot of fun, um, and, and you really, you know, you can, re can really take advantage of it and, and learn a lot and, and really better your game for, for your college team. And now a conference leading 27 strikeouts looking for Andre Pallante, his fifth strikeout of the night. Yeah, really starting to find a groove here. You know, after the third, giving up that run with two outs on a walk in the air, and, and, and you know, now really, really kind of finding his groove and settling in. Uh, he looks good. Here's Kelly. There's Garrett with a team best six home runs on the year for UC Davis. So Pallante trying to stay a little bit away there on that first offering. This one popped up a mile high, but back towards the seats. So a symmetrical ballpark here at Cicerone Field at Anteater Ballpark. And just a pleasant, pleasant environment for the game of baseball here on the campus of UC Irvine. As the lights coming on and starting to take a little bit of effect here at the ballpark. Coach Spawn told us a good story about taking a vacation in Newport Beach yeah. with his family and for the first time in the summer and, and um, running to a kid that, that lived with some, some Irvine baseball players and and uh, he, he just kind of made him realize what kind of competition <laughs> he was up against recruiting-wise because it is a great place to live, and these, these, uh, these kids have a good time living down at the beach, and, and they have it shows in their enjoyment coming out of the field and playing at this great park. Yeah, people talk about it all the time, the, the advantages recruiting-wise that UC Irvine has, that, that UC Santa Barbara has. And the fact that it's so close to the beach and, again, the great weather that you get here in Southern California. As this one popped up again by Kelly, just continues to hang in there against Palante. Yeah, you know, UC Davis, their, their swings are, they, they're good athletic kids with some good swings, but it looks like they're 
we're all trying to do a little bit too much with each pitch. You know, you got nobody on base, you're, you're down three. You know, use those good swings for line drives, balls in the gap, and, and you know, kind of get a rally started. It looks like most of the kids up there are trying to do a little bit too much with each pitch. And again, Kelly staying alive here. Dan Holm on deck. Dan Holm with three home runs of his own on the year. So Kelly doing all he can to reach base here as Davis tries to make up this three-run deficit. And on the corner, and there's that breaking ball. Another batter caught looking here I mean, in the fifth inning. Now 28. Tim, I, I wasn't run really paying attention too much at the numbers on the on the strikeout look, called looking, but um, but you're right on, right on. It's at a high rate. I haven't quite seen anything like it. A little frustrating if you're the UC Davis coaching staff. You want your kids up there kind of battling, maybe not trying to do too much like I talked about with the big swings. Get up there. It's tough to do too much off of such a good pitcher. You know, trying to kind of tone down those swings a little bit to a little bit more line drive as opposed to a big home run swing. I know that's tough to say in the launch angle <laughs> era, but <laughs> line drives still do work. Down the line for Denno, but a fair ball. And so Logan motoring into second base standing with a two out double. Well, he got his pitch, AK, blowing in, and able to take that one down the line. So Davis continues to hang around against Andre Pallante, having good at bats here tonight. And now an opportunity for Jalen Smith to cut that deficit in half. <laughs> so Denno now with 14 doubles on the year. Yeah, I, I don't think Pallante is going to give Jalen quite an easy pass this at bat as he did did last to kind of start that two-out rally. Going to make him earn it this time. As Ireland up with it, and in time to get Smith. Aggies threatened with a two-out double from Denholm, but Pallante able to nail the door shut. It's still 4-1 Eaters. At UC Davis, the lives that touch us inspire us. We dive deeper than the surface. And see light through a new light. We reinvented transportation. And prefer our rides to have two wheels. Or two stories. We celebrate individual expression. And play a role in the culture around us. We enhance a finer living. And share our innovations with humanity. One vision, one world. There's only one UC Davis. It lies within us. It manifests itself in moments like these. For some, it's a belief, a spark that will develop into something remarkable. For others, it's more tangible, and they have experienced it right here at the University of California, Irvine, in moments big and small, intimate and world-changing. It is the power of I. Well, the sun going down off in that western sky here in South Orange County as evening is almost upon us, but a beautiful evening it is, and it will continue to be here at Anteater Ballpark. That's the Ant Hill, that grass berm down the right field line here at Cicerone Field. And UC Irvine trying to add to its three-run lead here in the fifth inning against UC Davis starter Brett Irwin. Domla will lead things off. As Adrian got the scoring started with that RBI ground out back in the first inning that scored Christian Koss. And this one 
towards left center field, but Kelly is on it. And that's the first down. Yeah, Irwin hanging in there. You know, he, he, just kind of that one one little rough inning there in the third and, and kind of settling back in a little bit. But, you know, he, he has the ability to keep him there and just because, you know, the pitch count may be rising a little bit, he has the ability to, to fight through that and, and keep his team in the game. So Peabody. Looking for his first hit tonight. Sophomore making his 40th start on the season. And Irwin connects with a strike here. And you're right, AK. You can see the comfort level back with Irwin. And just with how he's working up there on the mound, working a lot quicker at this point. Opposite way this time. Morrison back on it, but had Peabody well played right there. A couple good swings from Peabody tonight, driving the ball to the left side. Just kind of running into a little bad luck on those good positioning by, by UC Davis. But but Irwin, yeah, I mean, he's really settling in. You can tell, you know, he's, he's getting the ball and, and he's ready to throw now. I like his demeanor. Zikafus reach base twice tonight. You see Irvine, the lineup this evening, Palmer, Domla, Peabody, Zikafus. So four left-handed bats and four quality left-handed bats that they showcase, especially against right-handed pitching. And again, another reason why they can be tough to match up with in the postseason. Just with their depth in right-handed hitters, their depth in left-handed hitters. Yeah, and it's been, you know, Lewis with the big homer is a right-hander, so so the, the balance is great, you know, and he kind of has them scattered a little bit, so even if you're trying to match up late in the game, you know, you're going to have to burn a couple guys out of your pen. But... Their lineup, I'm, I'm telling you, when, when Palmer's in there, he really settles everybody in to, to where, they, where they belong. One, two, three inning for Irwin. It remains a 4-1 Anteaters lead. Hi, we're Warby Parker, an eyewear company that offers high-quality glasses starting at $95, including prescription lenses. Our frames are designed in-house and made from premium materials like cellulose acetate and lightweight titanium and include scratch-resistant and anti-reflective lens coatings. It may sound too good to be true, but we believe glasses can be well-made, stylish, and affordable and have set out to prove that with every pair. Try five frames for free today at warbyparker.com. When you rent a car on Turo, you're renting from a real person. No shuttle rides, no waiting in line, and no wandering a car lot. This is your rental counter. And this is you, already on the road. With Turo, this is compact, standard, and full size. This is better than your typical car rental. This is Turo. Download the app today. Five innings in the books. Here are the series opener. And Anteater Ballpark between the Aggies and the Anteaters. Andre Pallante in a groove right now as he has struck out six tonight and has a three-run lead to work with, but he will take on the top third of the Aggies order here in the top of the six with Murray, Morrison, and Van Blake. Yeah, this is a big inning for UC Davis right here. You know, Pallante's kind of settled in a little groove. Great inning for, for the top of the lineup to come up and kind of break that break that rhythm he has. So Murray, the last time he saw Pallante back in the third inning, tripled up the alleyway in right center field to drive home the only run of the game so far for UC Davis. We'll see what kind of approach Pallante takes with Murray here. And Murray towards right center, but Falia had him well played and that good closing speed for the Anteaters center fielder for the first out of the inning. I'm really impressed with Tanner Murray. He, 
He's got a great approach at the plate. Really uses the middle of the field well. He, 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 with the swing, he's really coming kind of down and through each pitch. He's a great low ball hitter. And he, and he you know, obviously not afraid to, to drive the ball to all fields. And, you know, he, he shows how, how clutch he can be with that with that RBI triple in third. That's Morris in a hard hit ball for a base hit. So the Aggies hitting the ball hard so far here in the sixth inning off of Palante. And they have a one out base runner. And for UC Davis, that is their third hit of the evening. Yeah, and you kind of tell um, ever since Denholm with the line drive double down the line, that they, they've they still have that strong you know, aggressive swing through the zone, but these last couple batters, you know, your angle's a little bit better and creating line drives as opposed to maybe, you know, dipping a little bit, creating those foul ball pop-ups we were seeing the previous couple innings. These are great approaches here. So Van Blake with those four home runs on the year could make things very interesting again. Good pitch right there. I plant it just really kind of get him off his fastball. You know, they're going up there, kind of being aggressive, flip that little curveball in there. You know, if you're hit or if they are going to swing early and they are going to swing at the curveball, you know, you don't, you don't want to make it easy on them. Make them, make them be good hitters. So a good bender right there. And now it's 0 and 2. Van Blake with that open stance in the box and then. AK, what's the biggest advantage you get from that open stance? Really to just see the baseball, you know, and, and, and if you're a natural diver, which you kind of come across your front side, it just gives you a little bit more room to work with so you're not cutting your, cutting your body off. And he goes after a bad one here as Van Blake tried to chase that one above the shoulders and goes down on strikes and now seven strikeouts for Andre Pallante tonight. Yeah, you know, I, I, I kind of feel bad for Caleb Van Blake. You know, Coach Vaughn talked about how tough of a year he's had just luck-wise, you know, and, and tonight, like I said before, his swings aren't bad at all, but, you know, he fouls one out, he fouls out his previous bat, and then, and then this bat, Pallante drops two pretty good, you know, pitchers, curveballs in for, for an 0-2 count, and then as a hitter, you get kind of frustrated and, and you swing at one out of the zone. Things just aren't going Caleb's way this year. It's, uh, you feel bad for the kid. So Palante with his seven strikeouts tonight. Now over 250 career strikeouts. And he becomes the fifth pitcher in UCI history to do that. And they've had some fine, fine hurlers here in this program. And almost getting Morrison was Palante with that pickoff move. Yeah, Morrison's a runner. You know, 13 stolen bags on the year, so, you know, they may be going to aggressive mode here, try to put a little pressure on Palante, but that was a close play right there. Maybe a little too, too close for comfort. The Morrison with 13 stolen bases on the year. This Davis team loves to run. But Palante for a right-handed pitcher, obviously, that move has to be really good. The left-handed pitcher has the advantage. Looks like he snuck back in there. So nice job by Morrison to go to the outside part of the bag. And there he goes, and this one gets away from Mazur, and Morrison has stolen it. Number 14 on the year for Morrison. And Davis continues to have success on the base pass as the Aggies second in the Big West in stolen bases now with 75 on the year. Yeah, Morris is a good looking player, real athletic, made a nice play in left field off Peabody last inning, kind of ball tailing away from him. Uh, good at bat right here, and he, and he can run. He, he's a good looking athlete. This one to Cost trying to end the inning, a low throw but dug by Domla. And another opportunity for Davis goes awry. Palante continues to shine as the Anteaters continue to lead. You know that expensive watch you always wanted? It only cost a fraction of the price to make. We thought that was crazy, so we made our own watch company. We created unique watch designs, launched online at fair prices, 
develop new styles, shipped to over 160 countries around the world, and created a community. Now, you don't have to overpay for a nice watch. Instead, join the movement. Shop now at MVMT.com. UC Irvine, a 4-1 lead over UC Davis as we go to the home half of the sixth inning from Anteater Ballpark here in the series opener. Well, it has been another fine year for the Big West Conference athletically, and you look at all of the conference champions so far, and you look at the top two right there in the game of basketball. Russell Turner and UC Irvine taking home the trophy. And then also UC Davis with a banner season under head coach Jen Gross, Morgan Birch. What a fine year she had for the Aggies on the hardwood. And the Big West Conference continuing to excel on the court, on the field, and in the classroom as well. And AK, you were Part of a CSUN program and CSUN becoming part of the Big West as well. And obviously a, a fond, fond set of memories you must have from playing in your college days with the Matadors. I did. It was a, it was a great place for me to uh, enjoy my college career. Just uh, great coaches, great friends I, I built there and, and really learned a lot about you know, just growing up and playing baseball and, and the whole nine yards. Uh, I love college. I, I try to promote college to all the, the young athletes that are having to make decisions between pro ball and college. Uh, I think it's vital to, to everybody to try to get to college if they can and, and really use these years and, and just, you know, you don't, you don't get that time back, whether it's on the field, the classroom, the coaches that you, you work with on a daily basis. Um, I enjoyed my time in college for sure. Well, I know you did because, uh, well, looking at your numbers in uh, 1997, you hit 482 for the Matadors. <laughs> your career average at, at CSUN was 414, and those I, I know were such special years for you and, and the program as well because of what you're able to do get to the postseason. And after Mazur with the fly out, Falia with the ground out here and too quickly gone for the Anteaters in the bottom of the sixth. Yeah, Ir Irwin really just continue on with, with, you know, his better demeanor on the hill, like you talked about, Tim, really just kind of getting the ball and, and wanting to get going. You kind of start to see that happening at, right after the home run. Um, Peabody kind of got quick, quick pitched. And, and since then, you can kind of tell Irwin was kind of fed up with what was going on and, and really turned the table and he's kept his team in the game. And, and for Irvine, you know, the three run lead, you know, you're, you're not, you're one swing away from kind of being in a mess if you don't, if you don't try to add on some runs. Irvine has now retired seven in a row and nine of the last 10 that he has faced. So Brett doing all he can to keep Davis in this game as Ireland Sends it to Morrison and another 1-2-3 inning. Now nine in a row retired by Irwin and 10 of the last 11 that he has faced. It remains a three-run Irvine lead. Extra power button. Extra power button. You're looking buff. May is Maytag month. Get great deals on powerful Maytag appliances right now. You know that expensive watch you always wanted? It only cost a fraction of the price to make. We thought that was crazy, so we made our own watch company. We created unique watch designs, launched online at fair prices, developed new styles, shipped to over 160 countries around the world, and created a community. Now, you don't have to overpay for a nice watch. Instead, join the movement. Shop now at MVMT.com. UC Irvine, a 4-1 lead on UC Davis as we go to inning number seven from Anita Ballpark. A 
and UC Irvine trying to get back to the NCAA regionals for the first time since 2014. Trailing Cal Poly by one game. You see Davis still with hopes of getting to the 500 marker better in conference play. But really the stories of the conference season, you see them in the top three. You see Santa Barbara with the phenomenal season that the Gauchos have had. Cal Poly has impressed in conference play. And UC Irvine trying to get to the NCAA Regionals as an at-large. And there is the RPI coming in. And UC Irvine still on the inside of things RPI-wise for the field of 64. But UC Santa Barbara with those 41 victories, including 15 in conference play so far. And so high in the RPI rankings at this point coming in. And it, the kind of season that Andrew Checkett's squad has had. Nobody saw this kind of season for the Gauchos, AK. Okay. Yeah, no. You know, I had them at UCR, and, and they had won 13 in a row going into that series. Um, UCR kind of put a whooping on them. And then ever since then, um, since that Sunday game, they've got back on track, and they're a tough team. The numbers offensively are off the charts. The numbers on the mound are great. They have a the three-headed monster with the three lefties, they roll out there on the mound, and, and uh, they're going to make some noise as well. Uh, but I, I really pull for Irvine to kind of make a push and, and get in that regional because I think they're they're just as dangerous. Yeah, yeah the Gauchos in line right now to host a regional. They're in line also as they're ranked in the, as high as number six in the country coming into the week. If they can continue to do that, then they will have a great opportunity at, at the uh, possibility of ho hosting a super regional as well. Would they be able to advance that far? And so that will create an interesting situation, obviously, because Santa Barbara, uh, when they hosted a regional a few years back, they had to do it at Lake Elsinore. And so that may come into play again here in 2019. And a strikeout here for Andre Pallante. So Pallante now with eight strikeouts out of the night as he gets Lara there. And so Pallante really hitting with all his pitches right now. We talked about Irwin getting into the groove, but Pallante has shown spurts of getting back into a groove as well as this game has gone along. And he will face Cameron Briggs who is a Southern California native. Yeah, yeah, both pitchers, they really kind of settled in here and, and kind of taken over the, the command of this game on both sides, really just pounding the strike zone, you know, making these hitters work, not, not giving those free passes and kind of nibbling as much as they were early on. They've, they've really, you know, turned the corner and uh, we got ourselves a little pitcher's duel at this point. So Briggs has been a strikeout victim twice against Palante tonight. And Andre now another two strike count as he gets ahead. But six and a third innings of work for Palante with those eight strikeouts. He has allowed just three UC Davis hits. And Palante has walked only one batter to this point. As Domla will take it himself at first base for the second out of the inning. So now four in a row retired by Andre Pallante. And here is Garrett Kelly trying to keep the inning alive. And Kelly, a strikeout victim, we went down looking against Pallante back in the fifth inning. I think everybody goes down looking. <laughs> Palante, it appears. Yeah, Palante has three of his eight strikeouts tonight have been looking. But the Anteaters making their case for the NCAA postseason. Ben Orloff knows that this team really has to put the pedal to the metal you know, over the final two weekends of the conference season. As that one stays up. And a lot of people saying that the Anteaters, they've got to go 5-1 to really convince 
the selection committee. They also have USC coming in here to Anteater Ballpark coming up this Tuesday. So that's an opportunity to get more ground RPI-wise against a Pac-12 foe. This one to the alleyway, long run, a dive by Palmer, but he can't finish the catch. It pops out of his mitt, and on his way to third base is Garrett Kelly. So Kelly with his third triple of the year. And Davis, now with two outs here in the seventh inning, could cut this deficit in half with a base hit. Yeah, it, it, I didn't think he hit it that good. It looks like Felia kind of gave up on it a little bit earlier than probably he should have with Palmer. Knowing Palmer's, his health is a little bit in question in there, right? So you're going to try to help him cover a little ground over there. Felia looked like he gave up on it a little bit, a little bit quicker than, than probably he should have, but, but still a tough play, kind of just in no man's land out there. You know, Palmer doing what he could, but Davis. Yeah, but with here, the, here we are again, Tim. Just, yeah. just kind of, you know, you see Davis hanging around, and, and next thing you know, you're, you're, you know, a little bloop away from cutting lead in half and putting a little pressure on Irvine. Yeah, Davis has left runners in scoring position in three of the last four innings, and another opportunity here for the Aggies. So they have had plenty of opportunities tonight to get to Andre Pallante, but now it's up to Denholm to work the magic here with two outs. And that again goes back to the fact that Brett Irwin has done such a great job of keeping them in this game and the way that he has gotten back in this rhythm now on the mound, retiring the last eight that he has faced. Really good pitch right there. Denholm with a double last to bat, so you know he's probably looking to be aggressive again, and, and just a really good slider from Palanta right there. So Logan out of El Dorado Hills, California, in the Sacramento area, Oak Ridge High School, just like his younger brother Trenton. Lewis, tough play at third. And a terrific throw really to first play. base in time. The Aggies denied again. It remains a three-run UC Irvine lead. Extra power button. Extra power button. You're looking buff. May is Maytag month. Get great deals on powerful Maytag appliances right now. By taking surveys, I've made over $250. I've gotten over $500 in cash. Who doesn't need a little extra money? Through the Swagbucks app, I can take surveys anytime, anywhere. Introducing Swagbucks, the fun rewards program where it pays to share your opinion. You feel like you have a little bit of a voice in what a company might be doing, what direction they might want to go. My opinion is worth something on Swagbucks. Enter Survey 10 when you sign up today and get a bonus $10 gift card. Don't wait. Put cash back in your wallet today at swagbucks.com. Well, UC Irvine looking to keep its postseason hopes alive. Here this weekend against UC Davis, they're off to a good start so far, but the Aggies hanging in there. And now UC Davis going to its bullpen for the first time in this series as it will be right-hander Jake Spillane who will take over for Brett Irwin who went six innings tonight, allowing four runs all earned on five hits. But Irwin was hurt by five walks. So Spillane now, who has been effective at times out of the bullpen for UC Davis, now in a big spot here in the opener of this series, trying to keep the Aggies close. Yeah, a local kid here from Mission Viejo, so you know he has mystery with most of the guys in this Irvine dugout. So it's always fun to see, you know, local guys being able to pitch against some kids they grew up with and probably have a, a good history against. So Spillane in the starting rotation for UC Davis, but Matt Vaughn looks like he's going to go with Blake Hanna tomorrow in game two as the starter for the Aggies. As Palmer in foul territory, but that one back out of play as Morrison runs out of room over near the barrier down that left field line. Yeah, Coach Vaughn talked about just, he thinks playing kind of 
just hit a, hit a freshman wall, really. You know, it's the first time, you know, these kids have pitched to this extent, uh, fall ball included, and a lot of innings under their belt. So, you know, physically it does become taxing a little bit, and, and Coach just thinks he hit a little bit of a wall here, you know, use them out of the pen the rest of the way. Bill Palmer hanging in there. So Spillane, the right-hander, Palmer, the left-handed hitter. Obviously the matchup advantage to Palmer here, but Spillane doing a nice job getting ahead of the count here, 0-2. Trying to get him to chase. And Spillane, a local product. South Orange County product, Tribuco Canyon, Mission Viejo High School. So another Aggie with local ties here in Southern California. Obviously, UC Davis has a tremendous reach throughout the state of California. Great diving stop by Murray, but it won't be in time to get the speedy Palmer. Terrific job, though, by Tanner Murray to keep that one on the infield. Yeah, Palmer's starting to feel a little groove now. The three, three base hits, his last three at-bats, all to the left side. But, you know, for a guy with, with some back issues, he's, he had the layout in left center there on a on a ball and it had to run quite a ways and then try to you trying to beat out an infield hit right here. So we're testing his health tonight. Coach coaching staff, Coach Orloff and the guys gotta feel good about what they're seeing from Palmer tonight. And here's Christian Koss. So Palmer came into the night batting 246 on the year. That average now around 262. So Jake always a threat on the base paths. And so Spillane will have to keep tight watch over him here. Yeah, for Christian moving forward, you know, one thing he will get better at just with experience and, and probably, you know, the, the, the summer going away and, and, you know, facing some good competition is, is you know, the off-speed pitches, the, the curveballs from the righties, the sliders, really, you know, having to stay on it. He kind of pulls off a little bit with his front side, you can see there. But, but just experience and kind of having su some success, you know, especially at a high level with a good summer, you know, really moving forward, that, that'll be something that, uh, that helps him. That one in on the hands of Koss. So 6-2, obviously with that big size, you see a lot more shortstops these days that have that long and lanky kind of build and can cover a lot of ground with those long strides as well. But Christian, you can tell he, he still is growing into his body. As Murray again will be called upon here and he will just keep the baseball. So Murray doing all he can at that shortstop side. But here in the inning, you see Irvine with a pair of infield singles and now runners at first and second as the Anteaters try to gain some more insurance here in the seventh inning. And now Spillane it really has to contend with a big bat as Brandon Lewis will stride to home plate and Lewis already tonight with two extra base hits including that three run home run in the third inning. Yeah, Murray is shortstop, you know, his, his offensive numbers, they're just off the charts. But you can tell it's shortstop. He's got a future there as well. He, he Earlier in the game, made a nice play up the middle. And then the last couple of bats here, uh, getting to the ball in the hole. Not quite finishing off the play yet, but but he's a young kid. And it's kind of the, the last thing is a shortstop that will, will come, you know. Understanding how to make the exchange in the hole, how to get rid of it. Um, those things will come. But he's getting to these balls really with, with ease, you know. And, and um, he can play shortstop as well. Two great shortstops tonight. No one breaking ball that misses inside. 
Well, Brandon Lewis with that big bat that he's shown tonight, obviously all season long, but what has enhanced his draft status even more this year is the fact that he has played so well defensively at third base. Yeah, he has. Uh, of all the games I've, I've watched him play, you know, you know, knock on wood, but he hasn't made an error. He's made some really good plays, um, and not all of them easy. You know, he, he has confidence in his arm. It, it, it's not a rocket of an arm, but he has, he, you know, he kind of flings it over the, there a little bit, but he has confidence in that, kind of a la Cal Ripken Jr., just, you know, a little bit of side sidearm. Um, but he has confidence over there, and it shows. I've been impressed with his defense for sure. Two and two on Lewis. Good battle here with Spillane. This is a good example of why he has so many RBIs. He's, he's, a, he's a run producer. He uses the whole field. He's not afraid to take a, a base hit to right field in a situation like this. Um, but at the same time, as we saw earlier, definitely can drive the ball over the fence as well. But he's a, he's a well-rounded hitter. He's got a bright future swinging the bat as well. And now the bases are loaded for the Anteaters, and nobody out here in the bottom of the seventh inning. The UCI <laughs> hoping to really put the hammer down as Lewis took that one off the thigh. Yes, Blaine kind of, kind of pitching how Coach Vaughn talked about maybe not being as fresh as he was you know coming into the year his stuff just doesn't look sharp you know uh, it it'll be there one pitch not the next good indication that that he is just running to that freshman wall and a bit a bit tired and now Domla looking to capitalize and you know he has Probably all his family here, some friends here to watch him play, back coming back home. So you're rooting for him to, to uh, do do well, you know. But but sometimes physically, it's just not we're just not allowing our bodies aren't allowing us to, to be at our peak performance. Hopefully we, can, you know, for his sake, get a, get a big double play right here, maybe a pop up in the infield, and that one skips away or a cross up. And here comes Palmer to score into third base goes Cost Lewis into the second. And the Anteaters add to their lead now with a four-run cushion here in the seventh. Yeah, kind of, it wasn't a bad pitch at all. It looked like maybe one of his better pitches, but just uh, a cross-up with Denholm there. It kind of had a little, a little talk about it from a distance, but something wasn't quite right between the two of them. But not what Matt Vaughn needed. Here in the seventh inning, trying to hang with UC Irvine. And Dabla now with a rip at it, but right to Kelly. Tagging is cost. Good speed. He will score easily as Lewis trying to take the extra base. And he's able to tag up from second to third. The Anteaters add another, a five-run lead. And now the seventh run of the night for UC Irvine, only 90 feet away. Yeah, another really good at bat by Domla with, with the runner scoring position. He, he got him on the board in the first with just a, a you know a little base, a little roller to second base, get that early run, and then here using the middle of the field again, not trying to do too much, get that add on RBI. You know his two RBIs tonight give him give him a good little cushion. Yeah, he now has 28 runs batted in on the year. So Mike Peabody. Looking for his first hit tonight, or a productive out. Only one out here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Yeah, a little bit more difficult with the infield in. Put a little pressure on, on Peabody to drive it through the infield. But as a hitter, use that for your advantage. Really just drive the ball down and through the infield. Get yourself a, a base hit and an RBI. So the Anteaters got the lead in the first inning on Domla's RBI ground out. Davis tied it with two outs in the third on the RBI triple from Murray that scored Smith. But the Anteaters took control. Three-run home run from Lewis in the third, and they have not looked back. 
as they have added two more here in the seventh. Way for Peabody, but fouls it off. But you look at Mike Peabody, and again, the physical makeup that he has and the athletic tools that he has shown with the bat, with the glove, and how he runs, and how much room he can cover at the outfield, but also what he can do on the base paths. Yeah, he, he's a threat all over the field. The only, the only thing is his mustache is terrible. <laughs> so I'm going to have to talk to him about that. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> baseball-wise, he's, he's got all the tools, and he's a great kid as well. So um, hopefully he goes out and has a good summer and, and uh, keeps getting better. Payoff to Peabody, and it's lined in the right center for a base hit. So scoring is Lewis. And Peabody, with that mustache you just talked about there, AK, able to drive home his 19th RBI of the year, his first hit of the night, and the Anteaters now have opened things up here with a 7-1 lead. Yeah, the advantage of, of having the, hitting with the infield in right there. He, he didn't, you know, hit it well, but right, good positioning, you know, just by the second baseman, uh, Smith with a nice diving attempt, but, but, you know, offensively, when you have that infield in, it's nice to get that... I don't want to call it a cheap hit, but it's nice to get a cheap hit. Zikafu's fouled it off, and that got a piece of Logan Denholm, it looked like. So home plate umpire Sean Rakos taking a trot around home plate to give Denholm a little time to gather himself there. Really big gaining by Irvine here. You know, just, just as much in control Puente's been, you know, still, UC Davis coming into this inning, you know, putting a little pressure on. They were always that one hit away from kind of really making this a, a, a really good game. And then Irvine just kind of opening up this inning, give Plante that extra cushion. Uh, it's going to be tough for, for UC Davis at this point. Well, Denholm... The yeah, I don't play has been a busy man tonight, but especially busy in this inning. So already a ball that got away from him that allowed a run to score. And trying to manage Spillane here. This one towards left center field will get down for another UCI base hit. Over to cut it off is Morrison. He will hold Zikafus to a single, but the speedy Peabody Went from first to third in a flash right there. And now the Anteaters, runners at the corners with only one out in this inning. Yeah, Zickfuss, nice job of hitting. Was fooled, but, but once again, uh, these Irvine hitters have an idea up there. He's able to keep his hands back, flip it out in the left field. Peabody with a great read off the bat. You know, reading it, nobody was going to catch it. Get to third base with one out and try to tack on another run. Zickfuss now has reached base three times tonight. Two via hit. He's also walked. So what was a 4-1 to one UC Irvine lead is now ballooned to 7-1. to one, And this one up the middle for another run scoring hit. Mazer brings home Peabody. Into second goes Zikafus. And the Anteaters trying to blow the doors off this one now with an 8-1 to one lead. Mazer with his 15th run batted in on the year. Yeah, the, this lineup that Irvine, with, with Palmer at the top, everybody healthy, it, they are deep and, and they're extended and it just, it really settles everybody in and, the, and continue to put the pressure on, on UC Davis and any opposing pitcher. They all have good at bats throughout the lineup. A lot of action on the bases. You know, they, they continued this on the rest of the the rest of the way. You know, they, could, they definitely do some damage in a regional. So Falea trying to join the party tonight, looking for his first hit. As Kelly 
And a beat on it there for the second out. So a move for Matt Vaughn that did not work out tonight as his starter, Brett Irwin, went six innings and kept the Aggies in the game. But Spillane, who was moved out of the starting rotation this weekend into a reliever's role. And it has been a very rough go for Spillane here in the seventh inning as the Anteaters now send their ninth batter up to the plate. Yeah, Coach Vaughn talked to us about you know, the kind of the lack of, of depth in the pen and definitely showing tonight, you know, hopefully he was hoping to, to kind of flip-flop Hannah and Spillane here and, and kind of how he played out. But but Spillane just, just like he said, is just not quite as sharp. The inning is probably catching up to him a little bit. So Ireland 0 for 3 tonight. Felia and Ireland, you know, although they don't have any hits, they still have created some some action at the bottom of the order, you know, and, and every good team, you know, they're just, the lineup gets deeper and everybody has a, a part in it and, you know, there's no easy outs and everybody's kind of doing something and they, they've showed that tonight and it kind of how their lineup plays out when everybody's healthy. So Ireland now in a two-strike hole and Spillane just trying to get himself back to the dugout at this point. As UC Irvine has played it four runs here in the seventh inning. And a swing and a miss in the dirt as Ireland got a piece of Denholm with the bat. Denholm's okay. And the inning finally over for UC Davis. The Anteaters played four, a commanding 8-1 lead for UC Irvine. At UC Davis, the lives that touch us inspire us. We dive deeper than the surface. And see life through a new light. We reinvented transportation. And prefer our rides to have two wheels. Or two stories. We celebrate individual expression. And play a role in the culture around us. We enhance a finer living. And share our innovations with humanity. One vision, one world. There's only one UC Davis. It lies within us. It manifests itself in moments like these. For some, it's a belief a spark that will develop into something remarkable. For others, it's more tangible, and they have experienced it right here at the University of California, Irvine, in moments big and small, intimate and world-changing. It is the power of I. UC Irvine playing for its postseason life over the final Two weekends of the Big West Conference season. Anteaters trying to get back to the regionals for the first time since 2014. That year they took it all the way to Omaha. And behind Andre Pallante tonight and the big bat of Brandon Lewis. UC Irvine with his 8-1 to one lead. So Pallante has been so impressive tonight. Struggled in spurts as... You see Davis with a pinch hitter here in Connor Longree in there for Jalen Smith as he grounds out to start things. So Pallante continues to roll along with a seven run cushion to work with. And back we go to the top of the lineup with Tanner Murray. Murray has hit the ball hard against Pallante tonight. He's had terrific at bats, AK. He really has. He's. He's fun to, to watch. He kind of, you know, he just has a great idea at the plate. He, he really just throws everything through. The barrel kind of comes through the zone, stays through a long time, and really down on the ball, loves the low ball. He, he's been fun to watch through his bat, at bats and on the field. Imagine it comes right past my 
to Murray. Able to explode out of the scene last year with that 333 batting average as a freshman. Conference Freshman Field Player of the Year. Collegiate Baseball's Freshman All-American team. A member of that as well. The conference second team a year ago. And the numbers improving even more here as a sophomore. And so Murray on his way to first team honors here in 2019. Yeah, he's not very jumpy at the plate, you know, for a young hitter. He, he's confident. He has, he has a lot of confidence, and, and it, it shows just by the the lack of anxiousness he's showing. And um, he's got a bright future. I'm sure he'll have a good summer in the Cape and kind of be on the map for, for a high draft pick next year. So Pilate's staying away right there. Well, Murray just a good all-around athlete. He was a three-sport star at San Lorenzo Valley High School as he reaches first base here. Tim, where 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 would that be exactly? Yeah. <laughs> San Lorenzo Valley High School up in Northern California. Right. And, and he was a quarterback and a punter on his high school team. So Talented, talented athlete there. Also played basketball. And he's showing why he is such a fine athlete on the diamond of the Big West Conference with the two seasons that he has put together for UC Davis. And now here's Cooper Morrison who singled in his last at bat against Pilate back in the sixth. Yeah, Coach Vaughn talked to us about, you know, what Tanner Murray has kind of taught him as a, as a veteran coach. So Murray showing that speed into third base as Morrison with his second hit of the night. So the Aggies down seven, saying, hey, not so fast. We're not going down that easy here tonight. Trying to make a run at it here in the eighth inning. A big mountain to climb, but Caleb Van Blake with one swing of the bat could cut this deficit in half. And here comes Danny Babona, the UC Irvine pitching coach, on his way out to the mound. Babona himself, what a fine career he had at UC Irvine. Two-time Big West Conference Pitcher of the Year. And was the pitching coach for the Anteaters when they made their most recent run to Omaha in 2014. And so Palante tonight going seven and a third innings and that is going to be it for Andre it looks like as the Anteaters are going to go to their bullpen and so Palante will go out of this game with a seven run cushion but runners at first and third and one out here in the eighth inning and he gets the applause from the hometown crowd here after another fine outing for the junior from San Clemente and so he will give way to Ryan Johnston for UC Irvine. And Johnston, one of those Swiss Army knives that you see with baseball clubs that can pretty much do everything, as Johnston has played in the field, can play almost every position. He was even a backup catcher for the Anteaters at one time. He's played in the outfield, played on the infield as well. And so Johnston also has been effective out of the bullpen for the Anteaters, and that's where Ben Orloff and Dan Bavona will go here trying to keep this a seven-run game. Last Friday night, Johnston was, was put in right field for defensive replacement. Uh, Cal Poly San Luis Obispo hits a game potential tying base hit to right. He makes a, a great throw to the plate at home for the tag out to preserve the win for Irvine on Friday night. So he does do it all. Yeah, just a great kid all the way around as well from San Diego County. And so Johnston has filled so many roles over his career here at UC Irvine, but is coming out of the bullpen. And so Ben Orloff. Tim, did the, that Morrison, we talked a little bit about him, the previous at bat and, and how good of an athlete he, he was. Another good little base hit here. And, and really extending, reading the throw from Palmer 
probably not a great decision from Palmer to, to throw to third base, try to get Murray, and then take, take second base behind the throw. Uh, Palmer, just, just, take the, just keep everybody at bay, keep the double play in order, and, and throw the ball to second base would have been, been the correct play right there. But Morrison, good athlete, good base runner, a couple hits tonight for him. To the Aggies, hoping to capitalize here as Johnston on the first offering is Koss with the backhand and he will have no play. So a run scoring infield single that brings home Murray off the bat of Van Blake. And now you see Davis with their second run on the board here tonight. Yeah, not the end of the world right there. A tough play for Koss. He does do, I think he did the right thing by kind of eating the throw. Probably didn't have a good grip and, and you don't want to throw it away. So keep the double play in order there and just live to fight another day. You know, you got a nice, nice lead. Work, work on getting another ground ball. That one skips away from Mazer on the first offering to Getstad and so both runners will move up 90 feet. Morrison now into third as Van Blake into second base. And a base hit here could cut this Irvine lead in half. So Getstad hungry up there looking for his first hit on the night. Yeah, kind of, kind of surprised Coach Vaughn went away from Caleb Van Blake that this this time around. He, you know, I think with the swinging of the pitch out of the strike zone last at bat, just a little frustration. Kind of just let him kind of think about what's going on, give, give another kid in, in a bat tonight, and maybe get him back in there tomorrow. So it's 3-0 and now to Gedstad. Anteaters busy in their bullpen at this point. They've got right-hander Jordan Bacco getting loose and also with a left-hander getting loose down there. You see Davis just kind of keep, keeps hanging in there. Everybody keeps having good at-bats, you know, and, and starting kind of with the top of the order this inning. And, they won't go away, you know. It's, it's good to see these kids keep playing hard and, and having good at bats. They're not here to roll over against Irvine, that's for sure. Yeah, Davis tonight in the third inning left a runner in scoring position. Did the same in the fifth, sixth, and the seventh. They had opportunities to really go at Andre Pallante, but could not capitalize. And it's ball four here to load the bases. Yeah, those opportunities are tough against Pallante because with two out, two outs, you know, he's gonna he's gonna bear down a little bit and, and be at his best. Two out hits are just tough, you know, they they just are at any level against any pitcher, let alone uh, Andre Pallante. So this is a little better situation for UC Davis. You know, one out, we don't have to get a hit, score a run. A little less pressure on the hitters. You can kind of extend the inning. This is kind of their best offensive chance to have a big inning right here. So conference out of the mound is Dan Babona back out there for UC Irvine. We talk about Jordan Bacco, the right-hander throwing. That is John Vergara, who has been a quality left-handed arm out of the bullpen for UC Irvine this year. So we'll see what Danny Babona wants to do here and see if Johnson will stay in this game. And it looks like they are gonna to go to the pen to the right-hander, Jordan Bacco, with the bases loaded, and one out here in the top of the eighth inning as UC Davis trying to claw their way back into this game. So Johnston coming on for Pallante. And it, unfortunately for the Irvine side of things, Johnston not much success. And so Johnston unable to record it out here in the eighth inning. And he goes out after a quick outing here. 
And so Jordan Bacco, who has been the setup man for UC Irvine this year out of the bullpen in front of closer Taylor Rashi, as he will now take over on the hill and try to put this fire out here as UC Davis now one swing away from making this a two-run game. So Baco was the Anteaters closer a year ago. And now with the emergence of Taylor Rashi, who was part of the Anteaters starting rotation last year, moved to the bullpen as the closer this year. So Baco has really settled into this role as the setup man. And now it comes on in a big spot in this ball game as UC Irvine had an eight to one lead coming into the eighth inning, but Davis has scored one. Now the base is loaded with only one out. And Abaco will face a tough hitter in Alejandro Lara, who's over three tonight, but still hitting above 310 on the year. And Lara, three home runs on the season as well. These numbers from Baco, I can't figure them out. Yeah. They're not bad numbers. Good strikeout, not a bad walk ratio, and then a 6-4-4 ERA, so, and a 4-1 win-loss record. A little bit odd. Yeah, the opponent's batting 276 against him. He's only given up two home runs, but he has given up a host of extra base hits this year. And in situations where he's come into games and inherited runners and, and also being hit hard at times, but also being very solid at others. So the Anteaters, knowing that he is a veteran presence on the mound, and just hoping that tonight is one of those better outings that he can have. So for UC Davis, this is another terrific opportunity to get back in this game. So here is Laura. As he takes that one outside. Well, the opposite way. Dom La, did he beat him to the bag? And he made the tag in time. Just what the doctor ordered for Irvine. Line drive, double play off the bat of Lara. And the Anteaters limit the damage here in the eighth. You see Davis, tough luck in the top half of the eighth inning. A run home, bases loaded with one out, but Alejandro Lara robbed on a line drive, caught by Adrian Damla, who applied the tag on Spencer Getstad, and the Anteaters able to get out of a tough situation with limited damage being done. And so with a six-run lead here in the bottom of the eighth, and we'll go back to that play. Maybe a little aggressive 
with the runner at first base, you know, knowing the situation is tough because you do want to get a good jump, try to beat out a double play or just advance to the next base, but knowing the situation. Uh, and, and it's not just the base runner. It's the first base coach probably should be a little more vocal on, on, hey, you know, easy on your secondary, make sure we can get back on the line drive. So a new pitcher for UC Davis is Nick Johnson. And he is greeted rudely as Jake Palmer coming up with his fourth hit of the night for UC Irvine to lead things off here in the eighth inning. Yeah, right from the get-go. His first at bat, you know, he works at a full count with the ground out, ground out to second base. And ever since then, you know, he's, he's really worked to get back on track and use his line drive swing to left field. And he'll take four of them tonight. That's a... Really good evening for a young man. So Koss has been a regular on the base pass tonight. Walked and scored in his first two plate appearances. Singled and came around to score in the seventh inning. So the matchup tomorrow in game two of this series as UC Irvine will send out to the mound Trenton Denholm, who looks for his ninth victory of the year. And that 1.74 ERA just sparkling for Denholm. Swing and a miss there for Koss. And even more importantly, the brother yep. to brother matchup. That's gonna be that's gonna be a lot of fun for you and Sam Farber tomorrow. No doubt about it. We will have all the action for you right here on the ESPN family of networks. With so does do their mom and dad have to do the Curry thing where they're they're switching up jerseys, <laughs> the double-sided jersey? That's right. I'll have to find that out tomorrow. That'll be my pregame investigation. And that one overrun by the shortstop Murray. A trio of Aggies were there as that ball down that left field line, hugging the line, and it drops in for a bloop single. Yeah, kind of no man's land. You know, typically the shortstop would have a good beat on it, but because he's in double play depth, he's, he's quite a bit up, more up the middle and, and kind of in, so it makes his track to get that ball uh, that much further. I'd like to see the left fielder maybe be a little more aggressive. I don't think he got a great read on the big swing from Koss, kind of, uh, you know, step back a little bit then forward and it created him to be late we'll call it a fly ball single there and now the 12th hit of the night for the anteaters and here's lewis looking to add to his treasure trove tonight so lewis doubled in the first inning three run home run off of brett irwin in the third inning to give uc irvine a four to one lead they have not looked back ever since he was also hit by a pitch in the seventh, came around to score on the RBI single from Peabody. Yeah, you know, Brandon's hit with guys on base all night long, and, and Irvine will live this, live with this the rest of the year. You know, if, if he's going to hit with this many men on base consistently, they're going to they're going to be just fine. I, I would think. So the Anders trying to ride the bat of Lewis, ride the arms of their starting rotation over the final two weeks of the Big West Conference season. And if they can finish at least five and one over the final two weekends, and that would really put them in good standing with the NCAA selection committee. And that one high and tight on Lewis there. So Nick Johnson out of San Jose, coming to UC Davis for the junior college ranks out of West Valley College in Silicon Valley. I just have a hard time believing, you know. As Lewis takes this one to the opposite field. Long run for Lara, but he tracks it down in front of the warning track. Not a, not a great read by Palmer right 
right there, you know, you kind of see the outfielders had a beat on it, you know, and I, I know you want to initially get off, but, but read the outfielders. You got no outs. Worst case scenario, balls, ball falls, you get to third, you know, and you have bases loaded, no outs, but you really got to hustle back there. You know, read the outfielders have a beat on it, tag it to third. You know, it's all about trying to do best, do, do as good as you can for your teammates. Domla already has a couple easy RBIs, but in another situation to get your teammate an easy RBI situation. Yeah, you're right. I, I'm sure he'll be reminded of that by his head coach, either in the dugout or after the game tonight. As Domla fouls one off. But yeah, the, the focus that you have at the plate as a hitter, and then in these kind of situations, you gotta carry that focus over to the base pass with you. Yeah, and you know, all it takes is one moment of, 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 la of that lack of focus where, you know, something happens out there quicker than you were, were thinking and, and you miss an opportunity. Skips away from Denholm, and both runners will advance. So Damla already a couple of RBIs tonight, an RBI ground out in the first, a sacrifice fly for an RBI last inning. And now trying to get a couple of RBIs here by the benefit of a base hit. And Domla's been great all night long in these situations. Not, nice to see him tack on another. As he was swinging for the downs right there. He was, you know, he's, he's thinking to himself, all right, I've got a couple of RBIs, no hits. He's, uh, I'm going I'm, I'm to <laughs> cheat right here and go for, go for a big fly. Uh, now maybe get back to doing what you do best and, and be a good RBI man, and you, you've proven that over, over the course of the year. And it looks like it hit him. So Damla will trot down to first base. And now the bases are loaded for UC Irvine with only one out this eighth inning. Trying to add to this eight to two lead. Second batter that's been hit by a pitch. Just Belaine taking over for Irwin was not the solution. And now Johnson into some trouble here in the eighth inning. Once again, kind of the, the lack of depth for UC Davis in their bullpen. Kind of, kind of showing again, again here. And, and combine that with UC, with UC Irvine and, and their depth and their lineup. Really in their favor here. The Peabody and a hard ground ball into right field for a base hit. Palmer scores. Right behind him is Koss. And now they've got Peabody caught in a mini rundown and he is tagged out. And down to third base is Domla, but a two run single for Peabody. And the Anteaters now to double figures in the run column. Yeah, good aggressive swing right there. And Peabody does the right thing initially in rounding first. Right here, just keep going when they throw behind you. He kind of stops and then tries to go again a little bit too late. But it, the initial thought was, was good in being aggressive and going to second when they throw behind you. He just needed to continue on, so kind of put the brakes on and cost him right there. But I think he'll take those two RBIs. As Zikafus swings through the first offering from Johnson. Yeah, but Peabody tonight, three RBIs. Couple of hits. Now 21 RBIs on the year for the sophomore out of Tustin. Yeah, two plays for UC Davis. Kind of, you know, we can talk a little bit about it after break here in their defense and kind of what's kind of cost them tonight. But the Anteaters add a couple more. We go to the ninth. UC Irvine staring down its 13th conference victory. We're Warby Parker, an eyewear company that offers high-quality glasses starting at $95, including prescription lenses. 
Our frames are designed in-house and made from premium materials like cellulose acetate and lightweight titanium and include scratch-resistant and anti-reflective lens coatings. It may sound too good to be true, but we believe glasses can be well-made, stylish, and affordable and have set out to prove that with every pair. Try five frames for free today at warbyparker.com. Use the swag button, you'll always get money back. I've earned about $600 for my family. I've made over $900. $1,000 back. Over $2,600. What, what? Meet the swag button, the fun, easy, free shopping tool that gets you cash back from your favorite online stores. If you're already shopping online, give it a try and earn cash back. Plus, swag button applies coupon codes automatically, so you never miss a deal. It does all the work for me. It's a win-win for us. Get a $10 welcome bonus just for adding the swag button. Start getting your cash back now at swagbutton.com. You see your mind three outs away from another victory. And Mike Peabody getting caught up here on that two-run single. Yeah, you see Davis kind of just not playing sharp defense. You know, that play kind of probably should have been made by the first baseman. Uh, add that on to the, the ball cost hit where the shortstop and the left fielder at third baseman kind of couldn't catch it starting that rally. So the defense just not sharp here for UC Davis. And with, when your pitching staff is not as deep as – you would like them to be, or you need them to be in a, in a great conference, you be, need to be sharp on defense. And when you're not having either one, it makes for a 10-run night. Yeah, Davis with a 971 fielding percentage entering the night, around the middle of the pack of the Big West Conference. But you're right, AK, it, it, especially when, yeah, you, you don't have the horses in your bullpen when you've been struggling at certain times with your rotation this year, you just can't afford to give up the freebies. Yeah, you know, we talked about just kind of the end of the year for UC Davis, the, the last weekend in, in conference for them. They'll go to Utah next week, they're, they're, which is their bye week in conference. So maybe just a little bit, you know, looking towards the end a little bit and then as much as you try to fight it throughout the game, and, and you kind of see they still had fight throughout the game, but then just little things here and there, and they kind of add up. And when you're playing a team like Irvine that is hungry and, and, and playing for a big, big spot in the regional, um, you know, it, it kind of shows it's tough to keep up with that momentum throughout the night. So Briggs flies out as Jordan Baco trying to close things down and close things out tonight for UC Irvine. And they will keep Taylor Rashi fresh for Saturday and Sunday of this series, the Anteaters fine closer. Yeah, that's another, that, these add-on runs that Irvine has, has given them, you know, the last couple innings here are huge for that alone, Tim. Being able to save your best arms out of the bullpen, you know, be, that way you can extend them maybe a few more outs than you would normally if they had pitched tonight. So a uh, great job by the offense to, to, you know, give the pitching staff a little cushion here and be able to use some other guys out of the pen. Orloff, I'm sure, appreciates that. As Kelly swings and misses at the breaking pitch, and now the Anteater just one out away from moving to 13-6 and six in conference play and earning their 32nd win overall this year. So a good slider there. So nine strikeouts tonight for the Anteaters pitching staff. And a pitch hitter. So it'll be Colton Evans who will come up to the plate for UC Davis. And a pitch hitting roll for Logan Denholm here is he is the redshirt sophomore out of Modesto. So the Aggies tied things up on a Tanner Murray RBI triple in the third inning. But UC Irvine just took the game over after that point. 
And now the Anteaters one strike away. UCI three run home run for Brandon Lewis in the third inning. They added four more against Spillane in the seventh inning and two more in the eighth. To Denholm to the mound tomorrow for UC Irvine. Trenton Denholm. And then for the UC Davis Aggies, as they will make a slight change, Blake Hanna will go to the mound, the right-hander, in game two of the series. And Adam will be back with you alongside Sam Farmer and our fine ESPN crew for game two of the series between UC Davis and UC Irvine. Yeah, I'm excited to see Denholm and, and on the mound and then the matchup between siblings and a great, great game tonight for Irvine. Like to see him keep that momentum uh, tomorrow night. And it, Baco strikes out the final two he sees tonight and the Anteaters put the capper on this one. So you see Irvine needing to win and win convincingly over the final two weekends of the Big West regular season as they get the pitch hitter Evans here and the Anteaters now move to 13 and 6 in conference play. And so UCI came ready tonight, Adam, to get things going. The pressure on them to deliver and to win games. And they responded in a big way behind Andre Pallante and also Brandon Lewis. Yeah, they did a great job offensively of really not leaving too many opportunities on the bases. You know, the, every opportunity they got, they seemed to push them across and they just kept the pressure on a little bit. And of course, Pallante with, with another gem on the mound. Uh, another big, big Friday night start from him. Just an all-around good game for Irvine. UC Davis regroup, get back at him tomorrow. So Pallante with the victory on the mound tonight goes to nine and four on the season. And so right now we will send it down to the field where we have tonight's player of the game and a big night offensively for UC Irvine's Brandon Lewis. Brandon, thanks for joining us. And just talk about how much you have enjoyed the transition from junior college baseball where you put up terrific numbers into Division I baseball. And, and how tough was that for you? And, and, and how has this transition been in this program here at UC Irvine? Yeah, um, I mean, it's been everything I expected. Uh, you know, coming to a place like Irvine, um, you know, you really can't really ask for much more. And, uh, you know, making the transition into the D1 level, it's, um, <laughs> uh, it was like kind of uh, hard in the fall. I mean, facing consistently good pitchers, like uh, especially our pitching staff with uh, Palante, Brubaker, and Denholm. But, yeah, I mean, I feel like I've transitioned smoothly, and, you know, I'm excited to keep this thing going and see what we can do. Hey, Brandon, Adam Kennedy here. You, you've been as good as you've been at the plate to me every time I see you, your defensive smoothness is, is far underrated as far as I'm concerned. It, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a pleasure to watch you play third in that rhythm. Um, I enjoy it. Uh, talk about Jake Palmer and him being inserted back in the top of the lineup and kind of how it sets the tone and, and just giving you more opportunities to drive runs in. Yeah, Palmer is one of the best leadoff hitters in the nation, in my opinion. Uh, the ability he has to work counts and get on base for me, it's it's huge. And it showed tonight, uh, I don't know, three or four hits tonight. But, yeah, he's consistently on base. And, you know, he's one of our team leaders and runs scored. And, you know, he proves that with his at-bats and, you know, my ability to hit him in. Talk about that at bat earlier tonight, Brandon, that home run that you hit off of Brett Irwin in the third inning, and it looked like you got full extension on that one. Yeah, uh, I saw the same pitch my first at bat. I fouled it off and knew, kind of knew what I had to do to put a good swing on it, and that's what I did. Got my swing off and was able to connect well. All right. Well, Brandon, we appreciate you joining us. Congratulations on the victory, and congratulations uh, to this anteater program. You're making that run towards the postseason, but still some work to do. Yeah, not done yet. We're excited to keep this thing going. Thank you. All right, Brandon Lewis tonight's player of the game as UC Irvine defeats UC Davis 10-2 in the opener of this series as Lewis goes two for four at the plate, a double, a three-run home run. He scored two runs, and UC Irvine with a convincing victory in the opener of this series. Great job, Adam. 
Really enjoyed working with you again. Thank you, Tim. Appreciate it always. All right. So for Adam Kennedy and our entire ESPN crew, I'm Tim Beckbar saying so long from Irvine, California, where the final score is UCI 10, UC Davis 2. All games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN. Good night, everybody.